Hey, deserving listeners, it's time for the final episode in which we do Dungeons & Dragons therapy on this campaign. We're going to do another campaign later, but this is a year and a half of demonstrating Dungeons & Dragons therapy with Thrain, Shush, and Grolo, with Adam (laughs) Johns being the, the dungeon master. If you've been following us thus far, you have been with us for a year and a half as we have been building a story together of epic, uh, an epic story involving fathers, long lost fathers, uh, flirting with pie making maidens and singing songs on stages with thunder waves of awesomeness and uh, falling down a mountain of snow and traversing into <laughs> the godlands and uh, hanging with your God and all sorts of things and, and surprise reunions with Nicholas and shadows and all sorts of epic things that have been happening. So this and is leap high dates and leap high dates. This is where everything comes to its climax end. And, uh, so yeah, that's Strap an, on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you could use phrasing, phrasing. Um, so um, I th- I'm not from this country yet. So. We don't we don't know where this is going to head. Adam Johns has a, uh, I'm, you know, the master of dungeon mastering and storytelling has something for us to do. Uh, he's told us that some very awesome things could happen, some very bad things can happen, and it's up to us as players to decide how things play out. He has left it open-ended for us to contribute to the story. So let's see what happens. This is the Psychology in Seattle podcast. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor, and my character is a dwarf priest by the name of Thrain. Berto, who are you? My name is Humberto Castaneda, and I play Grollo the Cruel. Davis, who are you? Uh, my name is Adam Davis, and I play Shush, the Tiefling Bard. And Johns, who are you? My name is Adam Johns, uh, and I am the game master of this heroic, world-saving set of adventurers. Wow. And this form of therapy is a demonstration of what Adam Johns and Adam Davis do at Game to Grow, which is an organization that uses games of all kind to help people in various different ways. A pretty big portion of what Game to Grow does, but not in its entirety, is to have Dungeons & Dragons groups to help uh, people with their social skills, their self-esteem, and the typical group is age 13 to 20. And uh, they've been doing this stuff for years. The clients can't wait to come to therapy. They love the game, and it gives them a structure within which to play with how to get along with their teammates, how to develop their own self-esteem, how to develop their own sense of self. And they all swear by how wonderful it is. Their parents will report to uh, us that things are um, going really well for them. There's a lot of repeat customers, people signing up. Game to Grow also is branching off into using Minecraft to a similar end and other kinds of games. So go to gametogrow.org to find out more information. Particularly if you're in the Seattle area, you can actually hire these people, not only for individual therapy, but you know the, the groups and that kind of thing. Davis, uh, what else you got for us? So another really exciting update in the world of Game to Grow is that we're looking to expand our services outside of the greater Seattle area. Right now we have 11 social skills groups in Seattle, Tacoma, Kirkland, Bellevue area. However, um, in the midst of uh, COVID-19, we've established an online presence running games through tele teleconferencing services. And we're going to be using that to expand our services outside of the state of Washington around the country. So if you'd like to know more about that, you can go to gametogrow.org and follow the uh, menu item for uh, groups, but both for adults and for kids. We're we're expanding in lots of ways right now. We also are uh, expanding, as Kirk, as you said, our uh, training program to include a lot more webinars and online trainings. So the best way to find out about that is to go to gametogrow.org slash newsletter and sign up for our newsletter because that's where we let everybody know about that program. Particularly if you're a therapist and you want to use Dungeons & Dragons and other kind of, kinds of games in a therapeutic way, particularly if you're a teacher 
and you want to lead these kinds of groups at school or your school administrator or you're a, you know, a boys and girls club activity coordinator or you're a parent and you want to do these kinds of things with your kids. It's a wonderful thing. Everyone swears by it. Go to gametogrow.org to learn more information. All right, Johns, get us going, the master of all Dungeon Masters. Awesome. Uh, so uh, if you are if you listen to a lot of the Dungeons & Dragons podcasts, you know that what we're going to do next is we're going to do a check-in question. Um, but today's check-in question is a little unique. Um, so I'm going to ask a check-in question, and I'm not going to ask uh, this same question for your characters. Today it's just going to be you. Um, and the check-in question that I have for you is, what is a time when you left everything on the road? Uh, so my dad is a um, uh, amateur cyclist, um, and I grew up riding bikes with him, and, and uh, he still does cycling competitions. And he's talked a lot about um, when he does a cycling competition, he he uh, says, you leave everything on the road, meaning you don't take anything back with you. Everything, you gave it everything, everything you had, all, all of your physical energy, all your mental energy, you put it all there when you did your competition, and you that way you don't regret anything. Uh, when you leave, you you know that you gave it your all. Um, and so my question for you is, when when is the time when you left everything uh, on the road, so to speak? And that could be physically, but that could also be uh, mentally, where you were really throwing yourself at a task or really throwing yourself at a at an activity, and until you really had nothing left, uh, be it good or bad. Maybe that was that was you had nothing left and you couldn't complete it, or you had nothing left and you powered through and and uh, made it. But that's my my question that is open for you. So a lot of things come to mind, but the first one that came to mind is when I was wrestling. I, I played a lot of sports growing up, but wrestling was the hardest mentally and physically sport by far. And there was one year where I had a rival in the league, and we were the both we were the best uh, in our in our weight class. And it was the final match of the season. It was the championship match, and so whoever wins. It was a tournament, so whoever wins was the champion of the league, <laughs> and and it was the hardest match I had ever had. It's the hardest thing I'd ever done. I remember I had pulled ahead, and all I needed to do was just hold on and not let him get any more points, and it's all on video. My dad filmed the whole thing, and when I think about it, and particularly when I watch it, my hands just sweat and my heart starts to race because I remember just desperately like every fiber of my being was wanting to just relax and take a break because it's just so mentally and physically exhausting but i but i was like you gotta hold on you just gotta hold on one more second just one more second okay you just hold on for one more second and then when i won i could barely stand and you see me kind of stumble off of the mat and people are coming up to me and congratulating me and all I can do you could just see my body like everything was left on the road for me. Oh my god. I can visualize I it. it. Yeah. I feel tired I just hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take a break. Sit down and have a nap. <laughs> um awesome. I, I guess I can go next. Uh our, the one that comes, I mean, there's a few as well. Um, there's one that always comes to mind when it comes to these things. Um, and I was in ninth grade, and I had to do a report for biology class. And we had been assigned different topics, and it was in, in pairs. And I wanted to do it on the brain, but, like, someone took the brain for some reason. And so the other one that I was interested in was the census. <clears throat> so I was like, I picked the, the five census. Okay, great. I'll do the report on the five senses. And, you know, my dad is, uh, he was a child psychiatrist and, and therefore a doctor. And he had all these neurobiology books and, and stuff like that. So he got really excited that I was doing this um, on, the, on the brain, well, sort of on the brain, on the senses, right? And he just, like, gave me his college books, you know, like his big, big-ass books. And he started helping me with it. Um, and I really got excited about it. I started diving in and I worked constantly on this thing i read like i was powering through these college level books i learned about action potentials and neurons and like how the the chemistry worked and um and i prepared this presentation unfortunately my partner like he was like a civilian so he he wasn't he wasn't into all this so he just kind of like 
I gave him like, okay, you're gonna memorize these lines and do this thing. Um, but I really like, I learned the material so well. I worked so hard on it um, that by the time it came time to give the presentation, I didn't have any notes. Like I knew, I, I, and it wasn't like I had memorized my lines. I just knew the material so well. So I just gave a, a lecture basically. And I felt so in control. I, like I felt no nerves whatsoever. Um, the teacher was so impressed. Like that's a class that I was not doing so well in because I never turned in my assignments. And uh, so, I mean, I, maybe I was getting the equivalent of a C or something. I got an A plus for the semester. The teacher had me give the presentation to the other class. She told my dad it was a college level presentation. And so like that's a time why I left it all on the road. <laughs> I love it. That's, that's spectacular. So do you remember a lot about the senses? Oh yeah. Well, in fact, it wasn't, I didn't do a presentation on the five senses. I did a presentation on like 17 senses. I can't, don't remember the exact number, but it was like all these other senses that we have that are not just your, your five known ones. I had all these sure. diagrams. I still have one of the, the sheets of paper. I can uh, post a picture to our, our fan page or something. But um, yeah, I mean, I still remember quite a bit, not like the details of what I said, but I remember being there giving the talk and certainly I, I never ended up taking uh, these kind of courses in college. And so everything I know about the brain was from that. <laughs> like everything I know about how the brain works, neurons, everything was from that. Cause like, I, I don't remember my high school classes on biology, but I do remember that. It's crazy. I love that. I love how well that stuff sticks with you. Yeah. I was thinking about based on your response to this, Berto, I was thinking about my school experience and I pretty much put in very little effort most of the way through K K-12 education, uh, unfortunately, um, for my academic uh, career probably. But um, in college, I worked a lot harder. But uh, in college, I was actually an actor. Um, and I was an actor for many years after I was um, in college. And the sort of magnum opus that I did is I um, one of the reasons I became an actor in the first place is because my grandmother was a huge uh, patron of the arts mm -hmm. um, and she was in her 90s and had never seen me or my my cousin Robert, who's also an actor, uh, had never seen either of us perform. So what we did is we rented out a theater in Lubbock, Texas to put on a play for our grandmother. Um, so what I did is I, I for six weeks. I was on the road, literally. I drove down to Los Angeles and stayed on an air mattress on my cousin's um, apartment floor. And we uh, rehearsed a play and then drove from LA to Lubbock. <sighs> and uh, at this particular time in my life, I think I had just graduated from grad school. And so I really, and I just also left a long relationship. And so I really was like doing that on the road <laughs> thing <laughs> where I was wow. trying to figure out who I was and where I was going in this ocean of chaos. Um, and I really did like, that was a journey of discovery um, that whole time. And so I was in LA for three weeks and then Lubbock, Texas for three weeks. And then it was um, through that process of like emptying myself and starting over that I actually drove back to Seattle through San Francisco where I connected with my now wife. So it was, uh, wow. that was when I, I left it all on the road and became a new person on the way back. I'm picturing uh, fear and loathing in Las Vegas here. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little. <laughs> Um, I could picture you doing like a fear and loathing in Las Vegas kind of thing. It was less it's... fear and loathing and more just like Bud Light and uh, <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I was on the it road was... and Buffalo Wild Wings juice was still on my fingers. <laughs> it was... Where, give me my Bud Light. Uh, and if not that, a natty light, whatever, some sort of light beer that's very cheap. That's great. That's a really that's good a great impression. That's really good. That's very good. Yeah. You should, no, you it was... <laughs> it was so hot in LA that summer that we were just going to restaurant, like whatever the cheapest restaurants we could go to that had air conditioning. We, we saw so many movies because it was so hot in Los Angeles that we were just like going to the cheapest bars we could go to and ordering the cheapest things just so we could keep our table. Um, so it was a lot of like bad movies and really cheap beer. Actor wow. life, right? I love it. Um, so my... Uh, left everything on the road is is actually kind of a long story that I'm going to really shorten shorten down for the purposes of this. Uh, but while I was in college, I um, a friend of mine was getting married, and he wanted to go on a backpacking camping trip. 
and none of us had ever really been on a on like a camping trip where you backpack into some place and you bring all the stuff with you and we were doing this in arizona and uh in and so we found a good spot to go camping in sedona and it was beautiful because you hike down into a canyon and then you literally hike through a, a river at the bottom of a canyon uh that's that's between like ankle deep and and maybe waist deep at the deepest portions. Uh, and then you hike a, a certain distance in and then you set up a campsite at this, at this particular spot. Um, and our, our group of people got separated. So it ended up being just two of us hiking down and then waiting for the other two to come join. And it turned into this huge disaster um, because the two people who were going to join us got stuck in traffic and couldn't make it before the parking lot closed. And me and this, and this, uh, um, uh, bachelor who's who's getting ready for his wedding uh are hiking down in the, into this canyon and we probably hiked 20 miles in two days uh, because we hiked all the way down set up our camp then hiked all the way back looking for our friends then realized that they weren't there and didn't have car keys didn't have any way to leave uh and then uh had to hike all the way back to the campsite the next day to get all of our stuff that we had left there in in tents and hope the bears didn't need it um and it was a, a wild adventure but man it was absolutely exhausting it was way more work it was a huge disaster compared to what we were were actually planning uh and and frankly, looking back on the whole thing, I'm just really, really glad that nobody got hurt, seriously injured, or died uh, as a result of it. But it did make for a really great story. So sometime I'll tell <laughs> I, you guys the whole the whole actual story with all the details and stuff. But. I have heard the full story, and I will tell you. It's it a, good a, story, good right? story. <laughs> it's a yeah. good story, right? We'll have to have a podcast just on that. <laughs> <laughs> but that I definitely difficult. felt like I left everything on the road those those two days. That was a lot of hard work and... and uh, he still tells that story uh, to this day as well. Well, <laughs> really, really left him with something. Um, that being said, I'm sure you guys can imagine why that is our check-in question today. Um, Kirk, would you do us the honor of recapping uh, our game from last time? So, long story short, we, the three of us, are trying to save the world by killing the, uh, the avatar of Grumsh, which is an evil god. We're trying to find the body, the human body that this god is living in. And he is somewhere probably in the middle of the city of Pahiha that is completely turned up on its end with orcs who are bad guys, uh, probably doing all sorts of horrible things and sacrificing things. They're, they're doing, there's probably some ritual somewhere where they're trying to bring this god onto our realm so that god can create chaos and do all sorts of evil things and kill lots of people. We are in the city. The city is falling apart. There's fires. There's chaos. We managed to meet up with our old buddy whom we thought had died, Nicholas the Brave. He has formed a new band of, of uh, do-gooders, some Robin Hood sorts of figures in the city. So we've hooked up with him, and we are... Uh, about to head into the city. And we're hoping that from outside of the city, the good orcs that follow Lorleth will uh, maybe ride and be our uh, companions against, or be a distraction so that we can maybe get to um, get to Lord Blancmere, the avatar of Grumsh. We're also uh, hoping for some other things fill in the gaps here for me uh uh johns um essentially you you're hoping to maybe be able to save as many people as you can from this city um stop blanc mirror from from maybe destroying uh everybody but certainly from all of a sudden becoming this this uh representation of an evil god and and uh tromping across the land and and basically doing whatever he wants probably hurting a lot of people um and uh, uh, in the process, maybe meeting some old friends and getting some some help from them uh, kind of along the way. Yeah. We, and we do uh, not know where Cruddy is. That's that's a big question mark. Where's Cruddy? Uh, Where's it's a, Cruddy? It is a big question mark. And something happened at the very end of the last session just to sort of wrap us up and start us off uh, from, from where we are. Um, Kirk, I'm curious if anybody commented on the, the ship uh, that showed up at the end of the last session. Did anybody oh, actually right. actually mention that? 
Um, I don't remember. I I'm not monitoring all the uh, comments lately. I have to admit, so that there could have been a comment, and I just didn't monitor it. There's a lot of comments lately, so I haven't been able to. Um, well, I, I'd be excited if anybody noticed that. But at the very end of the last session, uh, you had traveled with uh, Nicholas and with all of the people, mostly the Rogue Guild, but all the people that he and the Rogue Guild had had right. saved uh, into the docks to try to get people on ships and, and sailing away from the city, away from the danger, um, only to find out that the orcs had prepared for this and had uh, many ships that were set up outside of the docks that started firing upon the, the ships and sinking the ships that were that were there in the docks. Um, and then out of, out of sort of nowhere, uh, seemingly nowhere, you saw a familiar mist and the ghost pirates from the very, very first episode of uh, the Psychology in Seattle D&D podcast um, that uh, showed up uh, and just rammed through and destroyed every single one of the orc ships, uh, setting them on fire and uh, filling their hole with the, with the uh, rounded up bone flour that they will turn into bone bread. Uh, right. For all of these orc ships, uh, and waving at you happily as they <laughs> as they sailed by, um, uh, which leaves you into this uh, interesting position. Uh, so Nicholas turns to you and he says, "Well, I wasn't expecting that, but uh, I guess now we got to figure out what we're gonna do. Uh, we should get all these people on on the ships and stuff and start sailing people away. A lot of these people are are old or their kids or you know they, they shouldn't fight in a in a battle." Um, and I asked some of the people, not these people, but some of the people that I left down in the underground, if they would be willing to, to fight, uh, stand up and fight with the, the rogues guild and, and try to save a few more people. There's lots of people that are still stuck in the town, in, the, in, the, in their homes over there. Uh, so what do you think we should do? This hammer was made for Lon Lord Blancmare's head. So we need to find him and we need to let Moradin's blessings rid this world of the Grumshites. But there's, there's probably a lot of things between us and Lord Blancmere, so if there's some kind of distraction that could pull away some of the, the rabble of the orcs, we might be able to have a straighter shot to what I believe to be the central ceremony happening in one of the temples, and there we might be able to find Lord Blancmere. It's just a guess at this point. Uh, yeah. I think the tunnels can get us a little way there. But I don't think it'll get us all the way to Blancbeer's house, uh, if that's where you think the ceremony might be happening. Uh, Listen, there, there's an old saying uh, that I heard when I was a child. If you have a snake and it's got a head, it's uh, dangerous. But like a snake with two heads, you got to make sure you smash. Uh, well, snakes in general are dangerous. So like we got to go after the snakes, that's for sure. And if it has a tail, you should also listen for that. Yes, that uh, they, uh, that was part of the saying. Yes, I'm pretty sure. And there's also a sure middle that, that you follow. should probably pay attention to. <laughs> okay, all right. So, like, <laughs> snakes are dangerous. Yellow and black. Uh, and I sh we should get a snake? Is that what we should do? I, no, I really I'm not saying we need to smash the snake. Oh, okay. Is or the, the snake snakes. Maybe there's more than the one guy? snake. Okay. Let's uh, smash all the snakes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we well, and and we had to find Cruddy in the in the process as well. Cruddy. So we have to find um, the mouse that the snake is trying to get and and save the mouse because there's another mouse named Grolo. That's you, Grolo. <laughs> that wants to meet up and because the other mouse likes to make leap pies, he really loves them. Wait, I, I, think, I think I finally it, understand. These are homophones. <laughs> you have like a mouse that makes that makes pies or something. Yeah, exactly. I think this this metaphor might have might have gotten away from us a little bit, uh, oh. but I, I think I follow well enough. Uh, so here's what we'll do: we'll take you as far as we can in the underground, and then I guess at that point we just gotta fight back. Uh, there's a there's a thousands of troops on the way from from uh, here to the to the Blancmere's house, uh, and Cruddy stand I think is on the way there. Uh, you might be able to, to stomp through it, but we're going to need that support. Uh, let's, I guess, start making our way over there. So you're saying that you know a tunnel that gets us close to Blancmere's house. Well, close is relative, isn't it? 
Uh, I mean, it's wicked dark down there, and the tunnels are real hard to navigate. I think I can get you most of the way there, but m the last bit we're going to have to do off on the surface streets. Can you and your merry men create another distraction, Nicholas, since you're so good at that, to uh. draw away the, the orcs? And, you, and you're also good at surviving, so that'll be good, so that we can make a beeline for Lord Blancmere's house. Nicholas, Nicholas, um, uh, uh, kind of grabs your arm and and like in a in a, like a friendly gesture to, to kind of pat you on the arm, and he goes, "For the three of you, I'll do that." Um, oh, that's and then sweet. he turns he turns around and he kind of just points to to uh, everybody else, and they all just sort of hop into action. And it's clear that Nicholas has kind of taken on some leadership with the rogue skill. You don't know what happened to the previous rogue leader, uh, but everybody's kind of looking to him for their their leadership, for their advice, for, for what to do. And the rogues jump into action. Uh, you can tell the ones who are really clearly members of the guild, they're wearing leathers and they're they're dressed for combat and they, they have weapons kind of on them. And they start loading people up onto boats, uh, some of them and the rest of them uh, kind of motion for, for you and Nicholas and, and some of the, the rest of the rogues to, to travel back down into the tunnels. It's shush. like Ringo starting his own band or something. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> shush. Shush, I have a question, man. Uh, doesn't it make you sad we won't get to play again? Well, Crollo, I, I, this is was m my question I was about to ask you. Um, Shush is looking at the ships, realizing that he actually knows how to sail a ship. And uh, I, I was wondering if I should go with them or if I should go with you. Oh, are they going to go to a concert? No, I, I think they might need someone who knows the way around the sea. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, so how long is that going to take you? Because we got to go fight these people. <laughs> no, I... That's what I'm trying to figure out, Carlo. I, was, I don't know if... if where, where my place should be, you know. This is sort of what I've been talking about. Uh, I don't know if maybe Moradin's... Um, last concerts behind us. Oh, that's sad. I wanted to play one more time, you know. Go out with a, you know, with a big, big thing that happens that's loud, like one more of those. A bang. Uh, yes. That's a bang. that's the word you were looking for, Grolo. Yes. Put my hand on Grolo's shoulder. Bang. Bangs would be nice. So, Shush, are you turning around and, and going on the ships? There is all this talk of killing snakes, um, mm -hmm. smashing them on the head with their hammers from Moradin. Uh, Shush doesn't have a hammer from Moradin. Um, Shush doesn't have the love of a Lepi lady to quest after. He's trying to figure out where he belongs in this, in this whole story he uh he is, does so, know how to sail a ship so if i may it sounds like the the this is a this is a defining character moment for shush uh so shush is looking for um where he's most needed because yeah. he sees this moment where he sees all these all these people loading onto ships and all these people uh who who clearly could use his help um and and he's going uh i think i could i could do a lot of good there um, and he doesn't know that uh, whether or not he can do the same amount of good, whether or not he can do be it just as useful or or more useful, um, going after Blancmere. Yeah, I'm um, a musician. So, if I heard any of this conversation, I don't know. I think so. You guys are all sort of together right now. So okay. So yeah, you've definitely overheard this. Come on, George. We need your solos in between Paul singing. I mean, it's it's an important <laughs> role of the of the band. Uh, just joking. Um, uh, Shush, you cannot leave us. Uh, there are so many reasons that I could say, but most importantly, you have inspired us to do the th everything that we've done thus far. Without you, we can do none of the things. You have sang the songs. You have played the music while, uh, while we have, you've given the strength for Grolo to bring his maul down on, on other people's heads. You've given me uh, this. I don't have my maul anymore, sorry. <laughs> well, in the past. And 
you also are a friend that we cannot do this without you. If you want to save yourself and go on the ship, then you have absolutely my blessing, and I would never hold that against you. But we've been together, the three of us, and uh, I would feel some emptiness without you there with me in the end. Uh, Shush will put his his, his arm is, other arm is still on, on Grolo's shoulder. He'll put his other other hand up on uh, Thrain's shoulder and say, to the end. To the end. All right. Oh, so we'll and see Nicholas. you win again? <laughs> <laughs> it's time for that last bang, Grolo. Oh, yes! <laughs> um, Nicholas wasn't there for a lot of this conversation. He kind of comes back after talking with a, a bunch of the other people, and he says, uh, I think there's something you guys got to see. Come with me. Um, and he uh, starts kind of jogging down the th- down the hallways, back down this underground system of tunnels. Um, and it's it's a short trek that you you travel about uh, just a couple of minutes uh, before he he climbs back up a ladder. Uh, and he doesn't really say much during all of this. He's he's focused on on uh, uh, just traveling. Uh, but he climbs back up a ladder, and as you climb up the ladders yourself, you can see he comes up, and there is a huge crowd of people. And some of them are made up of clearly just townspeople, um, and who've, who've t- taken whatever they can gather. Uh, broke broken up ancient swords and weapons, uh, mops, uh, farming implements, whatever they. have had with them that they might be able to turn into a weapon um, and you can see the rogues guild also there but what you also see walking towards you are um, the Grimhammer tribe uh, and right next to them uh, clearly dressed in uniform are all of the uh, guards uh, from the city of Torex uh, and leading up the guards you can see um, uh, you can see your your good friend uh, the captain uh, Edward Mer- Mrist who is who is uh, standing there, not in uniform, but but ready to fight and with a sword at his side. Uh, and maybe most surprisingly, leading up all of the Grimhammer tribe is Cruddy. Uh, and in her hand, she has Whoa. a uh, what looks to be a bloodied iron frying pan um, <laughs> uh, that she's that she's holding uh, as she walks up. And she immediately, as she's as she's walking forward. And I, I guess I should also mention all the Grimhammer tribe are all wearing uh, what could best be described as T-shirts. And the T-shirts all say "Good Guys," but it's spelled G U D um, uh, G G G Y S. Good guys. Um, and uh, uh, Cruddy walks up to to you, Grolo, and she shoves the the frying pan into your chest, uh, and she she says, "I figured you had died by now." <laughs> oh, Cruddy! No, I I I don't think I died. I. I, we had a lot of uh, things that happened, and we could have used your help. I, I, I want to tell you that I. She uh, grabs you by by uh, the your the scruff of your collar, and then pulls you forward, Grolo, and pulls you into a huge kiss. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, and everything is everything is silent in that moment, and everybody's just sort of like wide eyed, uh, watching. Uh, and then she stops, and then she kind of bonks you on the head uh, with her ah. frying pan. Uh, and she says, don't you go and die now after all of this. Oh, uh, oh okay. Um, of course not. Um, that was uh, good. Hi. Nice to see you. Um, and she says, someone else wants to talk to you, too. Uh, oh, no more kisses, though. <laughs> behind... Behind Cruddy, your dad walks up, uh, Craig, uh, and he says, uh, he, he kind of gives a long, like, quiet look, and he goes, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kiss you. Hi, uh, uh, and he, father. He, he clearly doesn't really know what to say, he kind of crosses his arms, and he nods, and he says, I made shirts. Those are good shirts. Uh, where, where's my shirt? I did. I didn't make you a shirt. Ah! Oh, see, you you never think of me. This is this is our problem. No, wait, this wait, is the wait, problem. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, I, have, I, have, I have something I can give you. I have. Uh, 
Here, 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 here. Uh, take, take my, my hammer. What? For you. I brought it <laughs> for hammer. you. And not to use to smash in other orc skulls. But for you to Whoa. use instead. Uh, and he, he hands it over, and he actually has he actually has two smaller uh, uh, like axes, like hand axes at his side. Uh, but he had a, a large uh, maul, basically a two handed hammer on his on his back. Uh, and he Whoa. says, "I've never lost it. I'm sure you won't either." Uh, I never. Um, <clears throat> I will not lose this maul. Don't don't lose it. Why, why would I lose it? Why are you even saying? Well, what why did would... you do to your last mall? No, I have an axe. Look, I have an axe. I, I usually carry an axe. Do you like it? Oh, I love malls better than axes. Well, you use the mall then. I will love to use the mall. Good. It's for you. you. I brought it for you. Thank you. But I still wanted a t-shirt. But this is this is good. This I can use I'll, this. I'll make another t-shirt. All for, right. I'll find. I'll, I'll see if I can find another T-shirt and make another T-shirt for you. Then you can Thank have you. a T-shirt. Thank you. Can I have one too? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Do you want one too? Make it three. Or three shirts. So, all right. I'll find some. Uh, I'm. See I'm if an there's adult, a T-shirt shop. Adult small. They could do here. Let's, no, no, I don't know you don't need a mall. You. you don't need a mall, Shush. I've got a mall. No, small. I'm a small size. I'm not oh, very okay. big. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm short, but I'm still an extra large, by the way. <laughs> sort of wide. All right, so, yeah, so I have... You're sort, of, you're sort of stocky and wide. And yeah. wide. I'm not a tailor. Uh, <laughs> so I had a, na a great axe that I had gotten. What, what is this mall? Uh, it's actually the same as your mall. Okay. Uh, that you had previously. So it does it does 2d6. It's the same attack bonus as your great axe, but it does 2d6 plus your plus strength three. modifier okay. damage. Sweet. Um, and uh, this mall actually has... Uh, Craig has had carved his name into the side of the mall. Mm. Um, and you're not sure if Craig is able to read or if he just got somebody to, to show him <laughs> how to put his name into the side of the mall but but he clearly has his name kind of can uh, i tell that it's a them. name or do it, they just look like some you, you like know some you know that they're letters i mean you don't necessarily letters, know what it says uh you you for all grolo thinks maybe it says like like um uh something epic or or okay. the name of the weapon or something um hey i i see what it says here it's it's pretty cool i uh, i i approve of this mm. It's, I, it's great, I wait, wait, wizard, what do you think of it? I I asked a wizard to, to, to give me runes to carve into the side to name right. the weapon. Right, and it's good. It's a good name. It, how, how do you pronounce it? The regular way. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. <laughs> yeah, of course. We would both pronounce it the regular way. Yeah, why would you not? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what other way there is to pronounce it. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, it's a great name, and thank you again. Well, I uh, think we just figured out can see, the, the paternity test mall. is, is <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> There's really no question that you guys are related. Uh, uh, Craig, Craig turns right at the same time that Grolo turns towards you, so that, that they're standing side by side. And he goes, who, who told you we were related? <laughs> Um, but with that, uh, uh, Nicholas kind of, kind of jumps in and, and interrupts a little bit. Uh, and he says, uh, look, if you guys want to make it up there, uh, I'm pretty sure the ritual's all already going on or something along those lines. They've been trying to pull people into the churches around here and, and killing people. We're doing everything we can just to stop them from, from sacrificing people and more rituals. I'll bet Blancmere is right in the middle of all that right now. We don't really have any people up in that in that part of the town. That's the wealthy part of the town. So um, I asked Nicholas, can all of us go through the tunnel or is the tunnel too narrow? Um, he says, uh, he kind of looks over all the, all the people here and he goes, to be honest, I think we need to fight from here. There's still a lot of people in the town that are struggling. I think the three of you should go. Take the tunnels, 
uh, I'll get somebody to draw you a map and go after Blancmere, and we'll save as many people as we can on the way. Okay. And you will also s- distract the large part of the Once Grimm's the troops Army. up there see that, that we are uh, fighting back, they'll probably send most of their troops down towards us and meet us down in this direction. Okay. So I imagine it'll clear up quite a bit for you on the way up there. All right. Well, hey, Nicholas, uh, uh, we'll see you yeah. after all this is done. I have no doubt you're, you're, you'll survive. Moradin is behind you. I feel it. Um, Nicholas, I, I have a little advice for you because you're going to do a great job. Um, <clears throat> I, I lean in and whisper, keep a low center of gravity. All right, all right. I'll keep it secret. Yes. Um... And you watch as he balances on one foot just a little bit. <laughs> um, and he and he kind of uh, nods at all of you, and he goes, "Stay safe, friends. Hope to see you after all of this. Maybe one last concert, uh, at least a beer." Mm, absolutely. Um, and somebody does draw you up a map and, and gives you uh, instructions for how to navigate the tunnels. I um, mean, it looks like the, the orcs really haven't infiltrated much of the tunnels on your on your way down, but you're basically traveling through them alone. Uh, you can see Nicholas turn to everybody and he starts giving instructions for, for where people should go and, and directing people out uh, since he's uh, been aware of where the orcs have been and, and where the, the groomshites have been have been invading and, and you see people start taking off in, in different directions and, and Cruddy uh, uh, turns to you, Grolo, and gives you one last uh, hug, goodbye, mm-hmm. uh, and then takes off with, with the rest of the Grimhammer tribe. Uh, down, are you sure you uh, don't want to go with us, Cruddy? Uh, she says, I have, st- uh, she holds up the frying pan. She says, this still has more bashing to do. Okay, but but I want to see you after this is all done. She says, you can cook me a leap pie. Mm, will, I will. <laughs> and uh, How romantic. <laughs> and and <laughs> the three of you take off uh, down the, the tunnels. You travel for quite a distance. Um, it's probably five, ten minutes of of uh, just just running through through tunnels and stuff as you're following this map. And it is dark. Most of the lighting and, and torches that have lit up the way in these underground tunnels have been have been put out. Uh, but eventually, you you basically reach a dead end where the tunnel doesn't seem to travel any further. It looks like it's caved in, uh, but it's right nearby a ladder taking you back up into the into the streets. And as you do so, as you pull yourself back up into the into the streets them, themselves, um, you can see you're just just a little bit south of the of the kind of wealthier district that is in Pahiha. So you're in a great position to start making your way up. Um, so what we're going to do now is uh, I don't want to make it seem like the streets are empty. So we're actually going to sort of epically fast forward through. Uh, as you guys take out several platoons of orc troops. And the way that I want to do this is is more in a cinematic fashion. Uh, the three of you fighting your way up towards the the house that Blancmere is in. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to have each of you do is just describe for me a cin- cinematic moment that is happening as you're as you're fighting through imagine platoons of orcs that are you know between three and five orcs or whatever and and the three of you are sort of fighting your way up through through those orcs making your way to Blancmere's house so um uh why don't we start with kirk kirk why, what is a, a cinematic moment that happens along this way for thrain uh that that you can describe that's happening in, in one of these battles i since i'm a little shorter i uh with my new Moradin hammer, with radiant damage, smash through the hips in the midsection of one orc, and that orc goes flying into three other orcs, and they, they fall off the side of a bridge, and we hear the, the ah! <laughs> of... The, 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 Wilhelm, the Wilhelm scream, Wilhelm scream <laughs> uh, from four orcs as, as they die. Um, and I, I imagine that my hammer, when it strikes a really good blow, it has some kind of, some kind of heavenly 
clang, you know, some kind of r- that like, ring, like so. a bell or something. Yeah, or like bang, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and a little bit of light kind of comes off, and and they go flying. And at in that moment, I say, if, you know, feel the power of Morden's forge, bang. <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, Thrain, as you're as you're fighting, uh, you are noticing a little bit of diminished power. Uh, from yourself, in the same way that when you came to Pahiha the first time, you noticed a a more difficult time getting connected to your god. There's just not a lot of Moradin faith in this city, um, and you you can feel the difference. Um, the hammer still still rings, uh, and your spells still land, uh, but you can definitely feel a diminishment of the of the presence of Moradin, especially from the the mountain where you were um, literally connected to him in those in those moments. Uh, but this is a, a stark contrast to that, and it feels like a a, a, a drib- dribble of, of that Morden faith compared to the deluge that you had before. And by the way, any of you artists out there who want to submit some art from this final <laughs> battle involving maybe the, the Grolo kiss with Cruddy... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe the Grolo you standing. You gotta draw those big surprise eyes on Grolo. <laughs> yeah, or Grolo and his dad standing next to each other, and Grolo's dad has a shirt that says "Good Guys" with a U, or whatever. Uh, we would uh-huh. welcome those submissions and post them on our reg on all of our sites. So, <laughs> or anything else that happens in the future here. Um, Shush, what's a uh, epic that? happen to you as you're as you're fighting your way up there so i picture the camera is actually on grolo's face and then the the focus shifts behind him over his shoulder and then shush is running at full speed and then grolo ducks and then provides like an alley-oop and then (laughs) shush puts his foot on on grolo's shoulder as he launches shush up into the air and then Shush lands in the center with his rapier out. He lands in the center of a bunch of orcs and then casts Thunder Wave, which sounds like the beat just drops. <laughs> and there's a moment of silence and he lands and then <laughs> boom. And then all of the orcs. I'm picturing we're on a bridge because of what Thrain just did. So we're on a bridge and then Shush just launches Thunder Wave and then all the orcs just fly left and right over the sides of the bridge. And then Shush is standing there with his, his new Moradin powered rapier. The thumbs up. Hmm. I love it. <laughs> Those orcs would have done better if they had low center of gravity. <laughs> um, That's true. I'm, They're very chest heavy. Oh yeah, it's it's really a problem. They, they topple oh, yeah. over. They so skip. Easy. They always skip leg day and and yeah. and day. <laughs> Orcs are really really top heavy yeah. with very skinny legs. Yeah. Very um, small spindly legs. Yeah. Uh, Shush, you do discover uh, that this sword of Moradin has has a little bit more in in surprise for you than you uh, originally found out. And I'm going to give you an, an extra small scene here where you discover the the rapier of Moradin is actually a uh, singing rapier. Um, so as you swing it, it actually it actually plays plays music. It actually creates music, uh, and I'll let you kind of decide what that music sounds like, or or maybe it changes. That's that's up to you. Um, so as well, I as, was running while holding it, so it's it's making noise as Shush was running with it out, and oots, then it, oots, I imagine oots, 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 the pi- the pitch is getting higher and higher and higher and higher, and then when he hits the air, silence. Yeah, the beat um, drops. It also, uh, <laughs> when you lunge with the sword, the 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 full length of the sword doubles, uh, allowing you to reach targets that are much further away, um, and and you can make attacks at reach with this with this rapier, um, awesome. which means that mechanically in the game just means you can do so without having to necessarily be like right in right in the fray, uh, but you also discover that about your your rapier. Um, Grolo. Uh, give me a give me a scene of Grolo yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, triumphantly stomping his way through some orcs here. So what happens is like, first of all, uh, three main things. What what happens is that the scene that you just saw from Shush, mostly you are just hearing. You know, like when in movies, where you're hearing the the audio, like the music, and you're not hearing what they're saying. And so that's pretty much you're seeing him. You, you might have seen some lips moving, but you don't hear any of that. You're just seeing the music, and you see the epic music and stuff. But here's what was happening while Shush was running at me from behind. Like, I have, I, have, I have a few of these enemies coming at me, right? 
but I'm not yet like even uh, acknowledging them because I'm looking at the axe on one hand and at the mall in the other hand. And I'm saying to Shush, I'm like, I wonder which one I should use first here. And then the, the second thing that's going through in my head is I am, I've convinced myself that whatever it is that it says on the, on the mall is some sort of word of power, but I have no <laughs> idea what the word of power is. And, and but I was too embarrassed to ask anyone else. So I'm going to, I'm like in my head thinking, I'm just going to start saying things and I bet you one of them is going to be the word of power. <laughs> and so the third thing that happens is as soon as I like, I don't actually, you know, Shush thinks that we coordinated this really well with him, like <laughs> spring, but I, I didn't mean to do that. I just kind of <laughs> bent down for a little bit because I was ready to put my axe away and like focus on the hammer. And just as I'm doing that, I feel like, boom. And I go, what? <laughs> And like that springs, <laughs> springboard just shush off my shoulder. And I'm like, were you listening to anything? Oh. And then, and then finally, like the, the bad guys are in front of me. So I grab the thing and I'm like, um, I start like, you know, um, swinging at them. But I say random words like, you know, snake biter. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and since it smashes them, I'm like thinking, oh, maybe that's it. But then I'm like, no, no, that wasn't good enough. So then I'm like, oh, river falls, boom. <laughs> and I'm just yelling <laughs> random words. And then I start yelling like, blah, 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 like in um, Army or um, Evil Dead when, when he's like, uh, uh, <clears throat> so I'm just, I'm just ma like mauling people left and right, but I'm not really like, I'm, I'm still not even paying attention to them because I'm like, God, this is not doing right. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> Skyfaller. <boom. laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll add in. Craig's Mall actually does have a magical property. Um, <laughs> it is a returning mall, oh. which means that at, if you throw the weapon, it will always come back to you. So Craig wasn't lying when he said he never lost the weapon. Oh. Um, Although whether or not he actually knows that it's a returning mall or he just thinks he's really good at <laughs> holding on to the weapon, that's up oh. for debate. Um, but you can discover that in this in this moment, uh, Grolo, as you are. Okay, are so maybe what happens attacks. is I'm getting kind of annoyed. I'm like, ah, this 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 doesn't have a magic word. So at one point I just like, I'm like, I'm just going to use the axe. And I lob the thing away, but it like, bonk some orc in the head and then as i'm getting ready to like pull the axe out the thing comes back bonk! <laughs> like what oh <laughs> i That's love fine. it <laughs> based on that montage i love the idea that shush has this whole like Aven Avengers montage in his head where he's he's clearly Black Widow and you're the Hulk and he like does this flip and it's beautiful and then you realize that was all just in Shusha's head and in real life he kind of like just stumbles over Gorilla who's bending over to pick something up <laughs> and then like falls over and then yeah. like thunder waves <laughs> awkwardly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. both of those things are equally true yeah. he was epically awesome and sort of stumbled into that yeah <laughs> yeah i love it um as the as you fight through these orcs on your way up it's clear that uh the battle really has taken away from from stuff and even from where you are the city of pahiha kind of slopes upward towards the the wealthier districts and you can see down uh, some of the streets and stuff. And you can hear the noises happening from the from the battles that are happening in the rest of the city. And so you can tell that that it definitely has pulled Nicholas and the rest of the troops, the Grimhammer tribes, the the guards from the from Torax have pulled a lot of the troops away from where you are, uh, and they're now currently fighting down in that in that area instead. Uh, and it really has made a big difference to you being able to make your way up to Blancmere's house. So let's take a break and when we get back, let's continue with the epic journey, the final chapter. As you make your way up towards Blancmere's house, none of you have actually been to his house before, but you you've had the address, you know where to where to find it. He hasn't keep kept any of that hidden. He is a member of the High Society of Pahiha for a long time, and his house is reasonably close to actually the the king's castle in the very very kind of center of of Pahiha. Uh, but he, you're you're making your way up in that direction. He has this beautiful villa that clearly has sort of an open courtyard that is in the very center of it with walls all around it, and you can see um, there's actually no 
struggle, the doors to the to the front of the house are open. And so you have no real challenge making your way in. Uh, and he has a, a walkway and an archway as you come into the house that lead into this giant open courtyard. And all around the house, you can see that there are relics of groups, relics of old orc tribes of various different kinds, but especially focused on on Grumsh. And you can see that there are statues, there are uh, old banners. Uh, he was an archaeologist. He, he has kept a lot of really amazing relics from those times. As you come into the courtyard, however, you see a pretty grim sight. You can see all around you are um, bodies. Uh, people that were, were clearly killed, but not all of them. Uh, some of them are orcs. Um, there's a mix of, of orcs and, and uh, other people from the likely townspeople, you're guessing, from their clothing. Uh, and they're all sort of laying dead around this, this huge courtyard. And in the very end of the courtyard, standing in front of a, a massive statue of Grumsh, uh, you can see Blancmere. And the statue of Grumps, you notice, has two gems placed into its eyes. Uh, the you you recognize one instantly as as probably being the Watcher's eye that you had heard so much about so long ago. Uh, and it, he Blancmere is standing in front of the statue, and he has uh, just a, a short kind of jagged dagger in his hand. Uh, he's the only one who is here. And as you walk forward, he he says loudly to the to the courtyard. You're just in time. You've made it. And he turns around and he is covered in blood. Uh, and he, he's holding his, this, this dagger and he says, I'm so glad that you could be here for this. And then he takes the dagger and he jabs it into his eye. Oh, God. Yikes! <laughs> and... And uh, he crumples to the ground. He screams uh, as he as he jabs it into his eye, and he takes the dagger out and he throws it to the ground. And he crumples to the ground, holding his eye. Um, and he, he as it, as he opens up his other eye, he looks at you, and you can see his other eye has turned red. Uh, not the not red like bloodshot, but red like the coloring in his eyes uh, has turned turned red like fire. Um, and you watch as, as he as he stands back up, sort of stumbling as he's holding holding his his hand over his his now wounded eye, uh, and he says, "It's been such a long road to get here," and his voice is getting deeper. Um, and you can see his stature is, is growing, like he's standing up, but oh. he continues to almost stand up, taller and taller. And he says, "I'm so glad you were able to be here for this. I was worried that I wouldn't have an audience of any kind." And his voice continues to grow deeper and gruffer. And you can see he is um, expanding. His his uh, skin is uh, darkening in color, and he is uh, growing larger and larger. Um, and he takes his hand away from his eye and his his eyes still bleeding but you can see it's it's turned into darkness into blackness um uh, below his eye as if he um there there isn't an eye there um and and his eye closes and he he seems to stand taller and taller and you can watch as a greenish hue getting darker and darker is is coming into his skin and he says um you especially son of moradin I could not be happier to have you here in my moment of ascension. And I couldn't um, have been happier to be here to smite you and send you back to the underworld to which you belong. And yeah. as he grows larger and larger, his, his shirt tears. Um, mm. And you can see his skin is getting darker and darker. And a lot of orcs have, have varying levels of, of skin color ranging from, from gray and green. Uh, his skin seems green, but it, it almost seems like a greenish black. Like he's, he, his skin is turning um, uh, very, very, very dark in, in, in the green hue spectrum. Uh, and you can see as he, as he stands, his teeth are growing uh, into uh, very sharp incisors that he has almost sticking out of his mouth. Um, and he finally stands up to his full height, and he must be 10 or 12 feet tall. Um, yes. And he reaches over, and he um, grabs a, uh, a spear. The statue behind him actually is, is Grump standing there holding a spear. And he grabs the spear from the statue and rips it out of the statue's hand, crumbling the, the stone from the statue to dust. Uh, and he says, You think you'll stand there in front of me and stop me from taking this place? 
This is all of my power here, and you are too weak to stand against me. Um, and with that, he, he holds up uh, his hand, and the ground below you turns to um, stone hands that reach up out of the ground Ooh. and try to grab onto you. And each of you can make a check um, to avoid being uh, captured by the stone hands. Um, so you can make a it, strength uh, dexterity or dexterity or check. Yeah. Will this be a saving throw or a regular check? Uh, it, it's a saving throw. You can use uh, saving throw bonus. Uh, 13. I got a six. Oh. Yeah, I doubt the uh, DC is five. <laughs> uh, 13. Oh, I got a 13, too. Uh, none of those are good enough. Um, yeah, oh, as the hands, the hands come up and, and grab each of you. And they're, they're oh, tight. You, don't, you feel like you have, would have a hard time getting out, but they are not, uh, they're not really hurting you. Um, and Blancmere now very clearly having transformed into an avatar, into a representation of Grooms in this world, um, uh, steps forward, and his steps uh, uh, shake the ground. And as he steps forward, he gestures with his spear, and he says, You will each watch as I destroy your town and your world, and when I return, I will destroy you too. Um uh, and I then say he, you're you're too much of a you're too what would be the you're too you're too weak to face me in battle right here right now. I knew you were a coward. Uh, and and he smirks and he smiles and he goes, maybe you don't understand, but you are now insects to me. Fine, then then fight this insect. Um, or are you too too afraid? Uh, he is going to. Oh man. He's going to reach down to you, Thrain, and then he's going to turn, and he's going to grab Shush instead. Um, Shush, uh, I, this is a contest? Um, so you do get to roll. Shush, you get to make another... I think Dexterity is your better stat. Can right? I Can I cast can make Bless? A, can I cast something right here? Um, yeah, actually, I want you to... Um, uh, so, no, you can't, but you reach for it. And as you reach for it, Thrain, so I, I, let me let me back this up. I want to make sure this plays out right. You try to reach for it, and we're gonna we're gonna have that happen. Um, he grabs you, Shush. Um, you can make a dexterity check. Go ahead and and uh, uh, make your check. I'm it is a contest. Super against honest. Him. I already rolled, and it was bad, and it was a six. Okay, another <laughs> six. Well, no, 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 no. Sorry, it was eight. <laughs> it was an eight. I did my math wrong. It was oh, an eight. Okay. But honor code, it was eight. <laughs> Thrain, you reach for bless. Um, you reach for Morden uh, in this moment. Uh, yeah. Not just bless, but but a, an opportunity to 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 be strengthened by Morden. Uh, and you come up empty. And it is doesn't feel like Morden left you. It feels like he's too weak here in this yeah. courtyard, in this place that is just filled with groups. Yeah. You have nothing. Oh, no. And you hear a message. You hear the words of Moradin. And they don't sound like they're coming to you like Moradin sending you a message. They're your memories. You hear this memory of Moradin from when you talked with him. And he says, um, the faith in your people will give you a lot that you can call upon. Tell the band to keep up the good work. I just got chills. I don't know what that means, but it gave me chills. Um, Groomsh is going to pick you up, Shush, um, and he is just going to hurl you uh, into the wall. Before he throws me, can I say one thing? Yeah. We've always been insects. Um, oh. He doesn't <laughs> have a good response insects. to that. That's a good line. <laughs> We're always insects. Uh, the Beatles. <laughs> He's, uh, he, or the he, crickets. He just, Buddy Holly and the crickets. He just he just um, <laughs> looks at you with with a grimace and a, and a nasty look on his face, and he throws you, and you travel through several walls. Oh. Um, oh. Shush, you're gonna take a bunch of damage. That's a lot of rolls. That's a lot of rolls. But it's a die one, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
six damage, right? Or six you rolled ones on all those. It's six <laughs> six rolls. Um, you go through three walls, Shush. Uh, uh, and these are stone walls that you're traveling naturally. through. Naturally. Naturally, they're um, stone walls. Yeah. Would be I'm, balsa wood walls, rice paper walls. It would be too perfect for this situation. <laughs> so, Shush, you're, you're, you're taking a lot of damage. Um, you're going to take... Ah. Uh, 27 damage from that. Oh, I just threw up a little bit in my mouth. <laughs> All right, Shush is unconscious. <laughs> um, Can but... I say something to uh, Groomsh when this is happening? Yeah. So, well, I mean, no, first of all, be okay, before he actually grabs uh, Shush and throws him, I, I'm trying to get some words out, but I'm not quick enough on my feet, so to speak. So, so what I was about to say, I stopped. And then I see him grab and throw Shush, and I go, no! And then I say, you've forgotten something! Uh, and he says, what could I possibly have forgotten? And then I start. In a town where I was born, there were lots of mothers there. And we were strong, in spite of people like you. And when we're through, we'll be your doom. Uh, and he's he sort of stops and he's like curiously waits for you to sing. Uh, and he says, I'm going to enjoy coming back and killing the rest of you. And then he leaves, uh, not even turning around. How far, uh, he how far away is shoves Shush? Shoves the top of, of the the villa and the walls of the villa down, and starts and starts walking away from you. Um, and he raises his spear into the air, and as he does so, um, you can see a, a burst come from the top of his spear, um, and you can see that there are orcs that are outside of his house now that have come closer. Um, and you're you're struggling to turn, but you can see from the wall that he knocked down, the orcs like getting stronger uh, all around him, and they all kneel uh, before him. Uh, and he he doesn't say anything. He just points down to the to the battlefield, and the orcs take on their weapons, and you can see them erupting in rage, uh, and they start uh, running down the battlefield, and he just starts destroying buildings. Clip it. He's All right, like, I can't Kirk. believe you have to work around these clowns when you're game mastering. <laughs> yeah, some uh, of it, some of it probably we shouldn't shouldn't say. But Kurt, yeah, go maybe. go back and clip out from the backup what uh, Shush was saying. All right, and we're good. As he um, as Groomsh uh, starts uh, stomping off into the into the rest of the city, you can see he's he's just like pushing into buildings like like uh, knocking over brick and and punching through walls uh, he is clearly so strong um, Thring you can see Shush through the hole that was left in the walls that he went through and you can see he is unconscious he's he's clearly laying over there and he's not moving and in that moment you're still being held by this by this stone hand that Groom summoned out of the the ground itself right. and you can feel your hammer is still in your hand and it's uh vibrating just a little bit um and you can see like light coming up from your hammer and it seems to be sort of shaking the hand loose just enough for you to be able to squeeze your way out of it for you to, to sort of shake your way out of it okay um, I... almost like that's that's what uh, Moradin can give you right now is is the opportunity to break your way free. I, I run to Shush and I try to call upon Moradin's blessing to heal his wounds. Um, you uh, you can use your cure wounds spell. Okay. Um, in this place, Shush, you are healed for one hit point. Okay. Oh. I'll take it. <laughs> oh my god! But gosh. it's enough to to bring you back to consciousness. Oh, oh. And then um, I shush, you have you have bruises and cuts all over your body. Uh, I, you are just am I still so stuck so back up. in the stone. 
Uh, Grolo, you're still you're still stuck. You're still sort of struggling struggling okay. against it. I, I run. Can I I run to the entrance of the building and I I look out to see what's happening. Um, from here, you can actually see quite a bit of the city. It looks like Blancmere has a, an estate that looks over huge portions of the city. It kind of is in the center of things, so it can look down the, many of the, the streets that are leading up towards the, the capital area. And you can see the battle is turning uh, against you. The, the empowerment that Groomsh is giving to the orcs seems to be really going a long way. Not to mention Groomsh himself that is, that is um, running down and is taking out taking out troops uh, that are on your side. Uh, you can see your side is losing. I... You also see something else. Oh, what do I see? From where you stand, you can actually see that the all the stuff from the festival is still up. Um, so all the like hanging things that were, that were there from the festival that you saw a couple of weeks ago, um, when you were originally in Prihiha, when you when you performed in Prihiha, all that stuff is still there. Like it, they didn't quite have time to take it all down yet. Um, and you can see the festival square from where you are, and it's on the the other side of sort of the battle line. Uh, so you're on the the Grumpsh side of the battle line, uh, where it is. But it also means like all of the orcs now are are off fighting on the on the battle in the rest of the town, and there's really not a lot by the the stage area, the, the center <clears throat> courtyard where the the um, performances are. Queremos rock! So, <laughs> I fall to my knees and I hold up uh, my hammer and I look up to the sky and I say, Moradin, uh, please guide us, uh, guide my hammer and guide our way so that we can save these people. And I run over to... Uh, uh, Grolo and I smash at the ground with my hammer. Yeah, can um, I help him too? Like, can I be smashing with my maul too or something? Yeah, you're like, you're like, oh, like I see. Sque- I see. Squeeze with your arms <laughs> tight, tied into your body and you're trying to like right. chisel away with, <laughs> uh, <laughs> with your maul. Um, but between the two of you, you're, it's, it's enough to sort of break open some of the stone. Uh, and the, the break off some of the fingers from the hand that is that is holding you. Uh, and Grolo, you're able to, to squeeze your way out of the, the stone hand itself. Uh, uh, Shush, bring your loudest bagpipe song. Let's get down to the stage. I think my <laughs> Moradin is telling us that we must play an encore. Oh, Moradin will play again. Shush kind of uh, limps over to the group and then he'll cast Healing Word on himself and the Healing Word he says is Moradin as he like <laughs> holds, holds up a fist and then slowly pulls up the horns. <laughs> Moradin. I love it. Moradin. And then casts Healing Word on himself uh, at second level so he can get 2d4 um, hit points back. Cool. Oh. Uh, your magic is not diminished here, so you can you can heal yourself back up. Awesome. He gets uh, nine hit points back, so he's a total of ten right now. And I I, I aim my um, maul at uh, Shush, and I say, um, oh, "Water power." <laughs> Good job. That'll help. Uh, you can see he, he's feeling better. Grolo, you're pretty sure that that was very effective. Uh, the the magic think, of placebo. Yeah. I think the word is bang. <laughs> bang. <gasps> Maybe that's the word. You're right. <laughs> I got to use that. Mm, thank you. I mean, I knew that that's the I, that's. I don't know. That's not what I was doing. I wasn't doing that. I know the word is bang. Yes. As you so, I just was down. not sure if you pronounce it bang or bong or... <laughs> A bang, you know. Anyways, um, as you make your as you make your way down to the to the courtyard, um, you can hear all these sounds of battle. You can hear the sounds of people struggling uh, against the orcs that are that are attacking again, against the groomsheks that are attacking them. And you make your way down into the where the the stages are, and the stages are sort of half built because uh, they're they were kind of in process of taking them down, but um, but there is still one that was that is mostly intact. Um, and you can see down there by the stage, uh, there are two figures. Um, and there's one that's sort of laying on the ground who appears to be, to be sort of bleeding, bleeding out, um, while another one is, is standing over top of them. 
Um, and the figure who is bleeding out is is Daniel. Um, is oh. the stage manager who originally helped you when you were when you were um, uh, getting getting onto the stage originally as Moradin. Um, and he helped uh, us get the our figure start. standing over him is 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 whispering to him uh, and says, uh, "I." I don't know if I can do this without you. Um, and Daniel holds up his hand as he sees you re- walking towards him. And he says, just just for a moment, I I thought I saw Moradin again. Uh, and then you watch him slump as you're, as you're making your way into his direction. And the figure over top of him uh, is crying and, and, and um, he's, he's uh, uh, really hunched over and he's, he's holding Daniel really close to him. Uh, and he... Uh, is is crying. He really hasn't noticed that you're that you're there, but he's also dressed just like Daniel's clothes, and you think he might actually be a stagehand. Um, way back when, I wouldn't expect you as players to remember this, but way back when, uh, Daniel said he would get a stagehand to help. Uh, <laughs> you suspect this is one of the stagehands for the um, for the crew, for the, for setting oh. up all the equipment for the, for the stages. And he's crying and he's holding Daniel in his, in his arms in the, in this moment as you come, come walking up to, to closer to the stage and closer to him. Sad. So Daniel's still alive or is he dead? Uh, Daniel is dead. Uh, uh, it looks like, like he, he was attacked by orcs um, uh, who killed him, and and this other this other figure who you don't know who their name is yet, but um, uh, looks like he didn't get to him in time. His final vision was of seeing what he thought was the band Moradin, and then he died. Yeah, there's worse ways to go, you know. Um, oh no, Daniel! Oh, we can't do this without Daniel. Uh, who are you? Wait. Um, I remember you. I think. Uh, and the, the other guy kind of looks looks up to you, and and he says, "Who who who are you?" We are Moradin, that whom Daniel pointed to. We are yeah. the band that played at the festival. And yeah, we're very good. He turns to you, and he uh, uh, says, "You're the band." Yes, we are Moradin. And, and we kind of, need to get on the stage and play. My God commands it. He kind of wipes his tears and he says, I can do that. I can do that for you. Um, and he holds out his hand and he says, I'm Flomerfelt. Flomerfelt. <laughs> nice to meet you, Flomerfelt. <laughs> so this is a shout out to a listener from another listener because it's your birthday. <laughs> Aww. Flomer birthdays. <laughs> um... And he says, I'm, I gotta give him a first name. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with. Flomer Felt? St- <laughs> Steven, I think oh, okay. Steven Flomer Felt. I'm Steven Flomer Felt. Um, oh. And that, I'm that the first best name damn is... stagehand in this area. That, that first name sounds very hard to say. I'll just call you Flomer Felt. <laughs> That's what a lot of people do. Well, get us on a, we need a, we need to be on the stage. We need all of the fixins. We need uh, a crowd. Uh, we need everything you can get. We'll help you carry Daniel off, or maybe we can set him up to make it look like he's part of the band. Uh, he says, I don't know what we can do about a crowd, but I can make sure your music gets to everyone. I'll get your sound out. You just put on a good show. And uh, he goes running off. Um, and he's, he's uh, clearly like, um, he's got a little wand. Uh, and he's he's like directing uh, magic, and he's he's uh, moving moving stuff around, um, and you can see he's he's like connecting magical tendrils from from one thing to another. It seems like he's he's a, a little skilled in magic to be able to mm. to connect all the sound up the way that it that it is connected, um, and that makes it kind of up to you guys. You take the stage, and the stage seems structurally sound at least. Uh, you don't have the lighting or the pyrotechnics or even the crowd. There's no one here. You're playing to an empty courtyard. Um, but what do you do? I think we have to start off with some bagpipes, and then slowly build into some drums, so, and then add in some vocals. 
Yeah. And okay. Then a guitar riff. The I'll, vocals I'll put, need to call upon Moradin's power, and it needs to eclipse Grumptious power. So, Grolo, you must okay. sing for Moradin. Yes. You believe in Moradin, do you not, Grolo? You I, you've I seen do believe. The, you've seen the power. Yes. It is yes, not, I believe in us. I believe in Moradin. You believe in Moradin the band, and you believe in Moradin the god who, and I hold up the hammer, the strength of Moradin. Yes, I believe. I can do this. And you've seen the evil of Grumsh and how Grumsh needs to be smoten from this world. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, whatever that last part. I'm, I'm not so sure on what that part, but yes, you I believe. You saw Grumsh, his weakness as he ran away from me and refused oh. to face me. I hated his weakness. He's weak, and Lorleth and Moradin are strong, and so yes. you, you must sing in, into the magical megaphone so that everyone can hear it. I will do this! Maestro, shush. Begin the bagpipes. So now I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I think I'm going to call, like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure I'm doing this on purpose, but I... I'm going to um, do the equivalent of Rage, but which is now my heroic might, as I sing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because I got great. so inspired by Thrain's um, speech. <laughs> so I, I you know, normally I would have gotten like super angry and I would have gotten into a rage and I would have ran out and started punching. Instead, now I'm like, whoa, heroic might, right? And um, <laughs> so I start by, I grab my, my maul and I raise it up, and I, um, um, you know, and I just like raise it up, and I go, uh, wait, what was the word we, we just said? The shush, what was the? Um, bang. Bam, bang, bang. So I just raise my, my uh, thing up, and I start with bang, bang, bang. Bang goes the song about Moradin. Bang! Bang! We are singing strong about Moradin. Dum, 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 dum. And then the, like, the, the, the jungle music starts. <laughs> yeah, I start banging on my hammer onto the stage. I'm playing the beat. I want it to be the drum solo from In the Air tonight. Just, just what I'm hearing on my back. Yeah. Awesome. The the music really starts to starts to come together, and what you hear is it is echoing through the entire city. You can hear just the the music spreading out everywhere, and you start you start playing and you start really feeling better. You're you're totally engrossed in the moment of playing this music. And it does feel like you can hear the, the backups, the drums. Not only do you hear the bagpipes and the, and the, the uh, almost bell-like uh, playing that, that um, uh, Thrain is doing, but you can also hear other music coming from somewhere. Uh, and very shortly, um, you see as several members of the Blue Generals come oh. out of sort of the woodwork and are playing their instruments. They're, they're actually uh, gathering up in the area that normally the crowd would stand. And they have pulled out instruments, and they're playing along with what, you, what you're playing. Uh, now standing, uh, you're in the stage, and they're standing out in the audience playing along with you. And you can hear uh, almost like every moment of all of the music seems to be coming together. And you can see Flomerfelt is just running back and forth, like making sure that the sound is is getting everywhere and hooking hooking stuff up. He's got extra wands that he's putting down uh, in front of the other musicians as they start crowding in. Uh, and, and people coming from out of their houses as they start coming in and joining into the chorus. Uh, and in an amazing show of of a huge band coming together, and so it definitely has the feel of starting off as like a solo bagpipe 
just playing along and like that just the 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 steady sound of the bagpipe coming in and then the vocals joining in and then more and more and more band and vocals mm-hmm. and a full choir now of of just random citizens who have come in and, and started joining into all of the all of the chorus notes um we're, sing- we're, we're just- singing we're singing Mora Dan will overcome. Groom is a chomp. <laughs> um, and you're feeling it. Um, not just three. All three of you feel bolstered. You feel invigorated. Um, you feel like uh, like Moradin is standing there behind you, uh, ready to be with you. And for Thrain, this is a familiar feeling. This is the feeling you get in quiet moments. This is the feeling that you've gotten as you grew up as a as a young boy worshiping Moradin, and every moment that you stepped into a a, a temple to Moradin and and had a chance to reflect upon his teachings. This is that feeling. It's just emphasized. But for Shush and Grolo, this is a new experience. Um, for Shush, it, it is like the feeling when you play music, but just more of it. Um, and like somebody is standing there helping you play. And Grolo, it is it is just like the feeling of your mother singing to you. It is oh. just like that moment of as she sings and you feel safe and ready to tackle the world. And all of you stand there now fully energized. And uh, you can hear the tide of battle um, picking back up, uh, becoming re-encouraged. Um, and although you can't see the battle from where you are, you can assume and you can feel that that your troops are becoming bolstered in the same way that that you are. And you can see the members of the generals and the and the people who are standing in the audience with you who are also feeling feeling bolstered and feeling supported in that same way uh, that that um, uh, you are with with Moradin standing at your back. I ceremonially just comes... get down on my uh, knees and say, Moradin, I feel your blessings. Guide us so that we may send Groomsh back to where he came from. And I, uh, and I in repeat. In that moment, <laughs> there is a flash of light. Um, it comes down from above and centered on, on youth rain, uh, and the light seems to spread out and then, and then fade oh, away. Oh, wow. um, all of you are healed to full hit points. Um, you have regained any spell slots that you may have spent or, or abilities that you may have spent. Um, and um, you all feel stronger, faster, $6 million man better uh, <laughs> than you did before. Um, like, like uh, uh, Not like your, your actions and your emotions aren't your own, uh, but like you <clears throat> just are, are doing better at all the things that you do uh, normally. You have it was all of your on. abilities, you just feel stronger with them. I was halfway down, I-95, when the mescaline kicked in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Perfect. I was actually thinking um, Big Trouble in Little China, where everybody's yeah. standing. I feel sort of invincible. I thought, I, I said, I I thought the same of, thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sort, feel sort of invincible. Five demon bag. <laughs> um, so, uh, with that, you can uh, see the the... the Generals are ready to take over. The so- song sort of comes to an end, um, and the generals hop up on stage and start picking up picking up their instruments or 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 taking over your spots. And they say, they say, go go, um, fight in the battle. We'll continue the song, um, and they start playing the song again, just just picking it up to keep the song going to make sure that it that it doesn't stop uh, when you leave the stage. And, and I say to Shush, um, and so you you take off. Uh, but before we take off, I say to Shush, uh, Shush, I've been thinking, you know, the generals are going to need help, and I know how to sing, and, uh, you know, maybe I should, uh, you know, uh, never mind, that's silly. Well, let's go, <laughs> let's beat these people. It's time for that bang. <laughs> um... As you make your way back down, I assume you're going after you're yeah. going after Groomsh at this point. Yeah. Um, you Beeline. run around a couple of corners and make your way down. There's a there's a wide street. It's sort of the main street leading up and down the the center of the the um, town, the center of Pahija. 
Um, it's actually called Main Street. It's just the, the common name that people often give to those, those really big, wide sections of road. Um, and you can see standing there um, at the end of this, of this wide street, this Main Street, is, is Grumsch. And he's turned around, and there's a battle raging behind him with, with uh, orcs and, and all of your troops, and you can see it down the end of the street. But he has turned around, and he's facing you, um, and he does not look happy. He, he, he is no longer has that like smug grimace that he had on his face before. Um, now he, he looks angry, um, and he's, he's like uh, uh, frowning and angry in your direction. And he has several orcs that are kind of standing beside him, uh, but he points at you, Thrain, and he says, Moradin, how dare you show your face here? Um, and he charges towards you. And I Yikes. charge towards him. Everybody roll initiative. And I, I've got my um, heroic 18. thing, right? You still have your heroic, heroic mic mind. going, so you won't need to activate it. Um, 18. What? Awesome. What? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Focus, focus, focus. A perfect time. Can you, can you read <laughs> yeah. it and weep? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Horror effect. <laughs> I don't think I've rolled a 20 in years. <laughs> I got a 16. It's been a long time. 16? Yeah, 16 for sure. Those are great rolls. Yeah. Oh my gosh, those are spectacular 18. rolls. I love it. 16, 18, got inspired. 20. Yeah. Um, uh, so here's here's how this is this battle is is going to work. Um, you're all empowered. And I thought about I could give you like a bunch of extra cool abilities powered by Morden, and I thought that just gets too complicated. Uh, you all have your normal abilities. Um, and against Groomsh you are uh, now evenly matched. Um, so you didn't try this before, but Groomsh actually is protected by a godlike presence um, that prevents him from being hurt by normal weapons. So if you had tried to attack him before, you would have just bounced off of him or, or, or like clanged off of him. Uh, but now that is no longer true. You are empowered by a godlike presence yourselves, and that counteracts the, the power that, that um, Groomsh has. He's still strong. There's still, uh, you know, he's still a, a tough enemy to fight, um, but you, you now basically are counteracting each other's protections and extra damages. However, all the rest of the environment, all the rest of the things around you are effectively just fodder now. Um, you now also have the power to basically punch your way through a brick wall or um, or like leap leap high into the air or any of those <laughs> things. So um, in those senses, you are you are fully empowered. Um, and Groups is charging towards you, and he has he has four other orcs that uh, he's he's sort of empowered up as well along with him, and those are just fodder to you. Um, you can take out those orcs with a slap of your hand or an extra <laughs> wave of, of whatever. So those are cinematic opportunities for you to, to be fighting the orcs along with groups. So in, in any one of your turns, you can specify that you also like like <laughs> mow down two orcs on your way to, to groups or whatever the case may be. Um, those orcs are, are for the cinematic purposes of our, of our playing out this final battle, never ending, and you can always add in an extra, an extra couple of orcs you take out on the way to to Grimsh or something along those lines. That being said, as we hop into this into this uh, huge battle that, that you're doing, um, let's go through initiative. All of you rolled high enough that, that I'm going to have you act before Grimsh manages to get to you. So Grimsh is charging towards you. You all three are charging towards him. Um, that is going to make it Grolo's turn first. Ooh, yes. Okay. So... Um, what I think I do is, uh, am I able to throw my axe at Grimsh? Your maul, uh, you mean? Yeah. yeah no, yeah. no, You're... I want to, I want to throw my axe because I'm going to use my maul in hand, but like, mm. I want to kind of like get an axe his way. Okay. So what I yeah, do absolutely. is this. But remember Here's your maul could, could mow through a bunch of people and hit Grimsh and come back to you. <laughs> yes, but I, I'm Grolo, so like, I don't think that through okay. so well. So instead, what I do is I grab my axe, and I'm thinking, uh, like, the, the weird math in my head is, like, I don't want to have to be switching hands left and right while I'm fighting, so I'm just going to get rid of this axe. <laughs> so I throw it right at Groomsh, but on the way to Groomsh, it accidentally decapitates one of the uh, orcs. <laughs> 
you know i don't mean like to do that but it's just spinning like, and it just spin 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 <laughs> slice and then it's going right at groomsh awesome yes uh you can totally do that make me an attack roll against groomsh okay with what die with, 20 um uh, yeah, you can do it with a you, so D twenty, and then you can just add your normal attack bonus like you would for the plus for the five. Axe. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, eleven. Uh, so I got um, eleven on the attack. And eleven's not quite gonna hit. Okay. Um, you can still throw it. It just yeah, it, he just, it got thrown and just it decapitated it. someone, but it didn't. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm right behind um, Grolo. Am I next? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, yes, and and, and groups like takes his spear and slaps the the axe out of midair, and it embeds itself into the stonework below below him. I cast bless, so everyone gets a d4 on the extra things that they want to do. Nice that attacks, would be very very handy attacks and save. Um. Add to attack or save. Is it is it just one time or is it multiple times? It's um, a concentration based spell, so it'll right. last basically until you run out of concentration right. in a minute. Okay, so that's what I do. By um, Moradin's does... beard, may me and my allies be blessed with the wonderfulness of Moradin. Does the bless uh, have any visual effect? Maybe an enhanced one as a result of the of uh, the enhanced uh, atmosphere of Moradin. Yeah, a, a shining hammer appears across the chest of all three of us. Nice. I like it. Um, hey. Awesome. Uh, so, and sorry, I have, a, I have a quick question. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, do, like, you know, according to this, my, my rage, aka Herod, might last one minute. Am mm -hmm. I going to run out of that here? What, what's the deal? No, I'm I'm gonna basically start it from the top of the combat. Okay, and, um, and then the the second question is, um, it says I gain a plus two bonus to damage roll. Mm -hmm. Is that like would that have counted, or is it just when I because I threw it, it doesn't count kind of thing? When you make an attack, you make the attack with the d20, and that is to see whether or not you hit. And then the yeah. rolls that you make after that, like with d6 or d12, that's your damage. Oh, the damage. So when you deal it. damage, instead of got being it. a plus three, so if I end, had hit him, I would have added two the plus two. two. Got it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Shush. Awesome. Shush. Is, is he running straight at Thrain? Yeah. Or is he's, he running he's, towards uh, us it, in it's general? It's kind of the three of you. Yeah, it's kind of, he's kind of running at, at the three of you. I'm, I'm picturing uh, Grolo to one side and Shush to the other side and kind of Thrain right at the right at the front as, as you're, you're all running towards each other. So I am – I've got the violin out now. Mm -hmm. but you know bagpipes is hard to sustain your breath while you're running uh so he's got the violin and uh he's sort of pulling to the side a little bit and i would love to prepare thunder wave so that when he gets up to thrain i can blast the thunder wave and knock him off of his path so if he's running straight at thrain i can like push him to the side okay cool i love that that's a great idea um, i also picture shush sort of like uh he can't go full human torch or anything like that, but I, I like picture him like having like heat waves sort of uh, <laughs> emanating from him as he's playing like the the, the violin, get like going faster and are, faster and are, are his footsteps like leaving hot marks in the mm -hmm. in the ground as he's as he's running? That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So I'm gonna have that act on uh, Groomsh's turn since he is uh, diving forward. He's going to to uh, run forward and try to make an attack on Thrain. Except, Shush, your attack's going to interrupt his attack. Um, so, uh, what is your saving throw DC? Where is that on my? It should be the top of your spell sheet. I don't have a spell sheet because I'm on. D &D. Oh, you're you're using the D&D Beyond. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's your charisma plus your proficiency. Yeah. So, what's your per, what's your charisma uh, bonus? My charisma bonus is plus three, so it's plus five. Then. So it's so and plus eight, so thirteen DC. Um, perfect. Then he uh, fails his uh, saving throw, which means nice. that you get to do your full damage. That's two. And he's going to get blasted damage. back. I as ten thunder damage. Nice. Yes, yeah. he's. I, I know it's thunder damage, but I, I want it to be cinematically a burst of flame from like the 
Um, he he lunges forward, and the spear just almost hits you, Thrain, as she steps to the side, and then a, a huge burst of flame uh, slams into Groomsh, and Groomsh goes flying to the side and and crashes into a building and basically um, uh, topples the whole first floor of a of a building. And he kind of sta- stands up, like looking really kind of confused. Um, as as this is the first like real blow that you've landed on him, uh, and he just looks so angry, um, and then he's going to throw his spear, and what he does here is he throws his spear, and then uh, he seems to just continue to pull out more spears from nowhere, and he's going to throw them at all three of you. Oh boy! Can I can I actually use one of my bardic inspiration dice to give him uh, the cutting words? Uh, yes. Uh, so he's going to hit with two of the attacks. Um, which one do you want to do? So he, he's he's hitting uh, Shush and Grolo. Okay. Um, so you can cutting words one of them. I would like to. Well, I'm, not, I don't he's know he's, uh, I'm gonna Thrain. I'm gonna do the first one. I don't. Know, I can't tell when he's pulling out his spears who he's throwing at. So I'm just gonna do a okay. minus six to one of his attack rolls. This is the first one. Nice, nice. That is a that's a big enough bonus. Uh, so I'm gonna say that one's Grolo. Um, so he uh, throws one at, at Thrain and Thrain it 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 sort of hits your armor and then like deflects just to the side. Um, uh, but it, it like just causes you to, to shuffle, but it doesn't do any real damage to you. Um, and shoosh, it does it it uh, uh, spears into your leg uh, pretty pretty roughly, but not before you get off a, a solid note uh, that that causes his his follow up attack that's heading towards uh, Grolo to to fall foul. Um, and Grolo it flies right past you, and it it actually spears into the the front courtyard of a of a house, um, and totally erupts a fountain that they that they had in their in their front courtyard. Whoa. Um, and then he is going to say, um, uh, "You you were insects, and now you are finally something worth fighting. But I will still crush you and take over this land." Um, and that's going to make and, Grolo's turn again. And can we still hear the song? Yes, the song is still playing. So, um, um, I and, s- and if anything, he just looks super annoyed that this song is still happening. I, I, I'm I'm singing along with the song. Bang, <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so uh, what he just said uh, that I'm still gonna crush you, right? Mm-hmm. I go. First of all, I'm so upset because he just like threw those spears, and I it looks like he hit, hit shush. And I'm and I'm also upset I missed with my axe, so I'm gonna go into a frenzy. What's the equivalent mm-hmm. of frenzy for my heroic might? Is it still a frenzy? Oh yeah, I guess we should probably rename frenzy as well. Um, Is it like, yeah? Um, the effect can be the same. Do you have a good name for it that would that um, would be in line with heroic might? Uh, I hadn't even considered that. It's, uh, jubilation frenzy doesn't seem like it. <laughs> jubilation. I go into a jubilation. Okay. So Ooh, I uh, go into or, jubilation. Or, uh, yeah, okay. Jubilation right. is great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I'm like, we're gonna overcome. So and I hear Thrain singing and everything. I'm just like pumped, right? So first of all, I uh, I want to run right at um, at Groomsh, and I'm definitely gonna hit, try to hit him with my maul. But as I start running, I I. I move my arm with my maul back just to kind of like start running like this. But as I do that, I accidentally smashed the head of an orc that was about to attack me. <laughs> so I'm like, Jumping up from behind you. Yeah. And I'm like, Ugh! and then I start running towards um, <laughs> Grooms to attack him. Um, and I'm going to basically, I'm going to run as fast as I can. And I'm going to sing like, as I'm attacking, uh, I'm going to sing like bang as I'm attacking him. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So roll uh, awesome. Give me um, attack rolls plus die four. For your... Roll a die four as well. Plus it. Yeah. Okay. Birdo. Bur- Birdo yeah, yeah. Here. Oh, at die- the same time. Yeah, same time. Oh, okay. Okay. You One, get to two, add it on top three, of your attack roll. Four. The little pyramid, right? That's right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, so it's the top number, right, on the on the four? Yep. Correct. So I got a four and an eighteen. Uh, it's a plus, 20 plus nice. my five. 27. Yeah. <laughs> 27. Oh, and plus, uh, I mean, hits. yeah, right. Okay, so 27. And then uh, then I'm going to roll my damage, right? 
Yeah. Okay. And you can roll your damage and remember to add plus the extra the two plus bonus. two for yeah. your... Yeah. Uh, okay, that's a one and a three. That's four plus three is seven plus two is nine. So nine on that one. And then because of the frenzy, I get to do another melee attack. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, same thing yep. with the pyramid? Yeah. Yep. Ah, shit. Sorry. Okay, that's not so good. That was a 10 plus 2. Oh, no, sorry, 10. Yeah, that was a 10. Uh, okay, a 10's not going to hit. Yeah. Um, but you definitely still hit with the, the first with attack. The one. Yeah. Um, he, uh, give it's me a description for like, your attack. Yeah, because like the first, you know, I'm like, I got a little shocked that I hit this dude, and so I'm running. So the first one, I'm like, bang! And then I got so excited because it like made contact, and before he seemed so powerful, so I'm like kind of surprised. And then I'm like, oh, bang! But like I don't, I, I kind of instead of going bang, I just go like, uh, bang! <laughs> and like I sort of like wing it. <laughs> Um, he definitely like like eats the first hit and gets gets blown backwards by it. Um, and then as you bring in the second hit, he catches your your maul out of midair and then Ugh. rips it from your hands and throws ah. it across the across the courtyard, um, which isn't really a problem for you, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so I don't know because if you want to resummon it back right in that in that moment or if that's if you're gonna wait well, and, I, and play that I, in. I'm still Grolo, so like I, I kind of forget. Like I, I was excited when I saw that it happened, but like I'm forgetting that it does that. So I'm like, I just like go no, like my mole, like this, <laughs> and I reach out with my with my left hand, kind of like calling at it, but I don't, not intending to call it. I'm just like my mole. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it flies, the mall flies across the courtyard and then slows down in midair and then immediately starts heading back towards you uh, nice. for you to catch it right into your, into your hand. Uh, he just looks annoyed by the by the whole thing. Um, I forgot to mention, Shush, when you took the, the spear to the leg, you did take damage from that. Um, you took seven damage from that. Noted. Uh, sweet. I love it. That makes it Thrain's turn. So I raise my hammer up in the air, and I'm at this point worried that uh, Gr uh, Grumps is going to get away because uh, I'm so confident. I want to I want to kneecap him with my hammer, and so I try to do that. Sweet, I love it. Feel the power of Morden's forge, and I did not roll that great. I got an eleven. That does not hit. So uh, 11 is not quite going to hit. Yeah. Um, he actually uh, turns his knee as you're kneecapping him uh, so that you you kind of you hit his knee, but it, it kind of goes with the knee instead of against it. Yeah. Um, uh, and he he turns around um, and he's going to use this moment to take one of his legendary actions and he's oh. going to punch you in the face. Three. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, no, he's not. Um, oh. He's gonna try to punch you in the face. Uh, he he uh, takes takes the kneecap down and then tries to punch down towards you. And then, do you want to block it, deflect it, dodge it? What what do you think would? Yeah, would I'm be a best shield man. I just put up yeah. my shield. You you hold up the shield and his punch just whang right into into your shield and it actually makes like a burst of of wind and sound coming out from your. Uh, from your shield. And frustratingly it, to him, and it even seems to go along with the sound of right. the music. I was going to say. <laughs> um, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> bang. Yeah, it, it hits during one of the first bangs, and then you can just follow up saying the other bangs as 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 he does it. Uh, and he just looks so angry by, by that idea. Um, Shush, that makes it your turn. Um, I will uh, give a bardic inspiration to Grolo. So I mm -hmm. will play the last note on my violin and then I put it away and then I'll take out my, my Moradin forged rapier uh, and attack uh, the Groomsh avatar with my rapier at a distance because I can now so I don't want to be too close to him uh, with my insect like uh, disposition but I will attack him <laughs> um, with my bonus thanks to, to Thrain so I got a 21 to hit Ooh. Oof. Um, nice. That definitely hits. Uh, it does eight damage with the rapier. Awesome. Stabs him. My extended, extendo rapier. I love it. Uh, give, give me like a, a full description for your fencing prowess in that moment. 
Um, he's getting used to this new sort of hookshot extended rapier thing, so he's uh, a little bit trepidatious as he extends it, kind of with a flick of the wrist to get the thing to extend the whole way. So it's not that graceful, but uh, it still extends that extra five feet, uh, and I imagine it... Uh, I picture this like the hook shot from uh, Legend of Zelda, so I think it like has a little barb on the end when it extends the whole way. So I imagine it like kind of extends and it's a near miss, but then it snags a little oh, chunk like of pulls him from his, behind. Oh, yeah, cool! A little I like chunk that. of yeah. his grubs his um, shoulder. It, it grabs it grabs onto like his uh, his his shoulder is uh, like uh, shoulder muscle and, and like rip, rips at it and pulls pulls him forward after he just uh, landed this blow against um, against Thrain's shield. Um, and uh, he's going to um, he's going to do a bit of Groomsh magic. Um, he's going to grab uh, grab at the ground. He kind of motions with his hand, and the stones on the ground form back up, creating for him a new spear. Um, and then he is going to uh, grab with his other hand, and you watch as. Um, as instead of hands this time, uh, the stones around you turn into these stone tentacles, like uh, tendrils, um, and they reach up and they kind of wrap around each of you. Um, so this is still magic, so you still get a saving throw, but because he's using the stone around him and because you're so empowered, you're all going to get an advantage on your saving throws for this. Mm. So yes. it's a strength or dexterity saving throw, and you have advantage. We also get to use the plus four damage. Or that you plus also get to D4. use the plus, plus four for the bless. <laughs> Adam's looking. Look at his face. I got uh, you said crappiest. plus dexterity, or no, your strength. Uh, strength or, or dexterity. It's your strength save, so you're not. Wow. Okay, that's that's twenty two. Yeah, I got a eight nine. I maxed out both of my <laughs> dice on this, wow. so wow. I got a twenty and a four and plus four, so I got a twenty eight on my dexterity saving throw. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I got a fourteen, a three, and my plus five, so. I rolled, I rolled a five nice. on both of my twenties. <laughs> oh, rough. and a one okay. on my four. So yeah, I got a nine. Um, so this one does do damage to you. Uh, what was what was Grolo's again? Twenty. I had twenty two. Okay, twenty two. Okay. Um, Grolo and Shush, uh, both of you uh, uh, managed to avoid or break um, the the stone tentacles around you. The choice is up to you. We'll have you describe that in just a sec. Um, Thrain, the tentacles managed to grab onto you just, just a little bit more. Um, and you think you'll be able to break them easily with your, your hammer on your next turn, but they get some, they, they hurt quite a bit. They kind of bludgeon you quite a bit, um, as they're, as they're grabbing and wrapping and kind of slamming into you. Um, so you take, uh, nine damage from that. Ouch. I would like... I would like Shush to have dodged out of the way, and then two of the tentacles that were trying to wrap around him slammed into each other and broke. Nice. Uh, I love it. Uh, it was like a and perfect then, a perfect dodge that you have as the as the tentacles break and, and crumble back into stone um, afterwards. And then um, Rolo, of course, is uh, he sees what's happening, and he go he he jumps up as high as he can, yelling. Low center of gravity! <laughs> and then as he jumps, the tentacles kind of close in and he lands on them, kind of crushing <laughs> them to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love it. Um, perfect. The, the, the remaining tentacles around uh, Grolo and Shush uh, crumble back into the, the stone that they were. Um, and I guess he... Uh, and he's going to make an attack as well. Um, attack against Grolo... Grillo, he's hitting you with his spear as a straight melee attack, um, and he's running you through. You land on the on the tentacles, and then as you do so, he's he uh, uh, spears you through. Uh, I'm gonna say um, through your through your stomach, through your side, um, and he's gonna hit you uh, pretty hard. Uh, that's twelve damage. I, I don't get a saving throw on this one. No, because it's an attack roll against your armor class. Got it. Um, oh, but you are raging. I am raging. Um, uh, you, you have, have resistance uh, to resistance. bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage. This is piercing damage, so Heroic you have damage. resistance to that. So you take six damage instead of twelve. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so I take six damage. Um, and that makes it Grolo's turn. Okay. All right. Well, that that just made me more uh, <clears throat> heroic. 
Jubilant. So, jubilant. Well, yeah. So I'm already mm. jubilant, but now I'm going to do a martyr attack, which is what we used to call my reckless attack. <laughs> and so I'm just going to throw aside all concern for defense and attack with heroic desperation. Love um, it. Okay. So in doing so, it gives me an advantage on melee weapon attack rolls using strength. So what does this mean? Um, it means you I get to twice? roll twice and take the higher the twice two rolls. Twice with the little guy? Yes. Okay. Um, oh. Each roll you can add the... I guess, little guy. I guess actually just roll the, the d4 once and then add it to both rolls. Okay. Uh, roll that probably D4 makes the most sense. Okay. Uh, one. Fine. God damn it. Okay. Not good. And we need to get you a rolling tray. Yes! Yes! 2 0, baby! <laughs> Rita and Weep! <laughs> oh my gosh, I get so excited when that happens. It doesn't. There we go. All right. Okay. So it's uh, uh, 46. 0 plus 1, 21 so, plus 5, 26. So yeah. um, I'm pretty sure we've talked about this before, but it's been so long since we did like a really hardcore combat. Um, you guys, uh, uh, we, we actually do a house rule in our games uh, for critical hits um, that we like to do. The actual rule is you just get to roll your dice twice. But I don't like that rule because it means that you might roll really poorly and then you might wind up with an attack that, that doesn't actually hit for harder than a normal attack would. So what we do is we do a maximum die and then you roll extra dice on top of that. That's um, because so I rolled a 20? You're doing... Yeah. As, yeah. It, as if you had... Uh, your, your normal attack had rolled... Uh, yeah, because you rolled a 20. So as, as if your normal attack had rolled uh, two sixes and then go ahead and roll an attack on top of that and then I add see. all those numbers up. And... And a question, because I have this thing called Savage Attacks. When you score a critical hit with a melee weapon, you can roll one of the weapon's damage dice one additional time. Okay, add it so roll 3d6. 3d6. And we're going to add that to whatever damage you three, normally do for an attack. One, four. One, five. Five plus okay. three, eight. Uh, 20, plus 20 total damage. 20 damage. Okay, and that that included your raging uh, damage, your 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 heroic. Oh, damage twenty-two, well. twenty-two. Yeah. Oh, right. Awesome. Twenty-two. That is a ridiculous blow. A ridiculous amount of damage. Go ahead and describe for me that that attack. Okay. So, because um, he was basically you know going after after me, and so I got so upset. So I basically like. Um, I, I go like into this high, you know, like higher harmonic, higher harmonic. And I really, I'm really starting to believe the power word on this, on this mall. So I just grab it with both hands. I raise it high above my head and I go, and I look at him dead in the eye and I go, you forgot another thing. Bang! You know, sorry, with both hands. I didn't want to hit the mic. Bang! On his head. But we're doing a triple take like a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. So, like, we show oh, it from so different like, angles. Bang! From, like, several bang! different bang! angles. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love it. Uh, uh, perfect. Um, and he, he like, like, uh, uh, crumples to the ground. He's not. He's not unconscious. He just it, the the blow is so heavy that that it like knocks him to his knees um, as nice. you as you strike him. Um, is that it for your turn, Grillo? Was that? Oh, uh, I can do a frenzy still, right? I'm still in, sorry. I'm still oh, yeah. in okay, heroic, cool. so go, I get go my ahead. extra. Yeah, go ahead right. and roll your frenzy attack. Man, I get a lot of attacks. Two plus uh, oh, oh, ten. You still have your Bardic Inspiration die okay. also, so you can oh, add I a do, d6 so I get to, to that. No, no. Oh, no. So Bardic and Inspiration you... means you get an extra d6 if you want to add it to that. Three. So, so 13, and did you 13. add your d4? 13. Here, you did, here you did, so it's 13. Plus my okay. plus 5? Do I do my plus 5? Yep. Attack bonus? Mm -hmm. So it's 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, an 18 will hit. Okay. Because of Bardic Inspiration. That's great. Thank you for the Bardics. The so two die, two die six. Two die six, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. The power of rock. Three. One. So four, seven. Uh, seven, so uh, uh, nine. Oh, nine with my, yes, nine. Uh, nice. Very nice. 
It's a lot of damage, Berto. Um, I'm imagining this is just a second blow against him. Yeah, okay, so so I, I came down on his head. One. Bah! You know, like, bang! And then I swept sideways. Bang! Baseball style. Nice. Uh, you you crumple him down and then and then sort of stand him back up uh, with your with your second blow uh, as he stumbles backwards from the from the strength of it. Um, Thrain, that makes it your turn. So I I think I'm being tricksy and I I act like I'm going to hit him with the hammer, but then I cast uh, inflict wounds on him and I try to touch him. <laughs> with my inflict wounds. I'm going to cast it as a second level spell. Sweet. Uh, and I got a 19 to hit. Which I assume hits. Uh, yeah, 19 is definitely going to hit. And I'm going to roll all my, all my dice. By Morden's beard, you take 16 damage. And I, again, I'm trying to go nice. for, his, wow. for his knee again. Okay. All right. Um, it is he's it is a, a brutal blow, and actually, I think in this case you can totally get his knee um, and his leg. Uh, uh, actually, I'll, I'll let you describe it, uh, but you definitely land land the attack on his knee. So, uh, with Morden's power surging through my veins, I channel all the goodness and the power s- through his armor right into his knee, and it it cracks his his kneecap. Uh, right in half, but he, you know, he can still stand, obviously, but it's, it fractures part of his kneecap. And he screams out and goes, ah! And, and he, um, uh, uh, almost, uh, sp- spitting, kind of, kind of enraging, so angry, uh, tur- turns to you and, and shouts, um, uh, Morden, you piece of crap! Um, and, uh, uh, and I, but he, but he's, he's still like, like kneeling basically because, because of the damage you did to his knee. Yikes. Um, that makes it Shusha's turn. Um, oh, by, by, sorry, by the way, I, I got a roll, a roll box now. Oh, thank <laughs> God. Perfect. <laughs> I emptied a, a, a power bar, a fig bar box, and now I can use it as. Somehow I imagine <laughs> they're still going to fly out of that thing. Yeah. <laughs> the whole box is gonna fall on the floor. Now. <laughs> um, shush. So, how how badly injured is is everybody right now? I I'm only at thirty four. I'm that down to forty. Th- I'm down a third. I'm okay. okay. Don't um, worry about sh- me. Shush is going to attack again with his uh, rapier at. Um, <laughs> I got another natural twenty. Oh, oh my god. god. Unbelievable. Amazing. There it is. Uh, right all right. There. All right, all right, all right. Um like that's it. great. Shush is not much of a battle master, but I will take it. Um so he uh got a natural twenty on his attack and then got um sixteen damage with the with the uh, bonus. Wow. Nice. Man, you guys are, are really laying in. All right. Um, I want. I also, uh, after the first attack, Shush attacked from the extra distance, and I think he wants to go in now, and it's rock and roll time, so he's going to go up there and, like, because this guy's pretty tall, so he's going to go in there with a sort of upward-facing rapier attack to sort of go up under the rib cage almost, like, mm-hmm. oh, look at yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you, you pierce under his rib cage with a, yeah. with a critical hit. I think you you like full on jab him up through his through his rib cage. Um, uh, and and he he screams out at that as well. Uh, and, ah, as he's as he clutches his side, um, and he he is looking like he is in he's in rough shape. You guys have have dealt some some pretty br- brutal blows to him. Um, he is going to take his spear and he's going to shove it into the ground. Uh, and he's still kind of clutching his side and, and almost kneeling. He's, he's sort of hunched over, but he's going to shove his spear into the ground. Uh, and you are all going to make me a dexterity saving throw. I did not make it. Nine. Sixteen. Uh, Shush made it. 
Oh, wait, did I need to also roll the little triangle, or are we out yes. of Yes. Oh, yeah, you can still roll that, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, what did I say? 7 plus 2, 9 plus... Okay, 13. Uh, 13's still not going to do it, but I'm glad you, <laughs> you rolled the extra die. Well, you were closer. Um, uh, all of you, uh, shoot, you're going to take half damage from this one. But um, Thrain and Grolo, both of you are going to take... Um, uh, what is that? 22 damage. Oh, oh Grolo, you take half damage also. Uh, because this is this is actually piercing damage. Oh, okay, um, good, good, good. I am dead. Uh, How much as, damage is as this? His spears, as his spear reaches 22. Oh, you take 11. Shoot. So I take 11. And, and Grolo okay. takes 11. As his spears, um, uh, as his spear punches the ground, the uh, stonework around uh, erupts in spearheads that that seem to, to come at you from every angle. Oh, um, and Thrain, you're you're sort of guarding against against the spears, but it doesn't help from the ones that come from behind you and and uh, pierce right through your your back and shoulders. Um, and you're basically like like hanging unconscious on the on the spears that have that have run you through. Um, and the that spears hurts. don't go away as he as he pulls the the spear that he he's holding out of the ground. Uh, they continue to make that area sort of difficult terrain because now there's just a bunch of erupted spears. And he's actually going to turn to Grolo. Um, and Grolo, he is going to... Um, he, uh, he just turns and he stares at you, Grolo, and he only has one eye. Uh, but the eye that he stares at you with seems to pierce into your very soul. Uh, Grolo, give me a wisdom saving throw. Plus your die four. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. you do get to add your, your d4 on top of that. 17 plus one, 18. Okay. Um, you can feel Grolo as he is staring into you. He is trying to conjure and pull your greatest fears. And for just a moment, they seem to, to manifest in front of you. Um, at just a moment, you, you feel like almost like you're faltering in your, in your heroic might to stand there and fight against this target. Like he might be, he might actually be a little too much and he might take away from you all the things that you love. Uh, but it only lasts a moment and, and his eye is, is sort of piercing into you in that, in that very moment. Uh, and then it, it's, you seem to shake it off. Uh, as ah. as you realize that it, that you're you're able to resist against it, um, so Thrain is unconscious and runs. And I'm being spears. held. My legs. And he's are being still held, held up by by well, the, my legs the are also still are held by the ground. Yeah. Um, but uh, that is the end of Groomsh's turn. Uh, so Grolo, that makes it your turn. Okay. So. Um, do I realize what's happened to Thrain? Oh, yeah. Because you guys are okay. all sort of right next to each other fighting, okay. fighting Groomsh as he's, as he's uh, right in, you're all right in his So, face. So here's what I want to do. I, I'm going to go try to help Thrain. I want to, like, take him, like, rip him out of that situation he's in. Mm -hmm. I don't know that he's, like, maybe unconscious. Whatever. I just, like, I'm like, oh, shit, he's stuck. And, um, but I'm super annoyed still at, and, and, and what I want to do is I'm going to sing to like, because I know it gets under his skin. So I'm going to sing. I'm going to, he just looked at me in the eyes and I got scared for a moment. But then the way I push it back is I go like, Moradin will overcome and Grooms, you are a bum. And then I slap him as I run over to, uh, <laughs> to uh, Thrain to like try to wrestle him out of the situation he's in. Nice. Um, so you can totally make a, um, actually, I think the spears now are just stone, so you don't even need to make a roll. You can just break the spears okay. and, and, and take them out of, out of thread. And they basically and can I pull them out of the him, ground. So you can just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, so, um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so yeah, you can that. just, so, you can just so choose just, to do that. I just like sing in his face, slap him to confuse him and run over and like, Pull Thrain out. Okay, you're still sort stuff. of right next to him. Do you want to get further away, or do you want to just fight with oh. like Thrain under your over your shoulder or something like that? Um, yeah, no, no, like I, oh, that's so I, I, I grab Thrain. Yeah, I put him on my shoulder. I rip him out, put him on my shoulder, and I like, I move away a bit to just like make sure that 
that he's okay and that I can survey what's going on. Um, sure. I, uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you're able to do so. Um, you you break the stone and you grab Thrain and you're able to sort of dis, disengage and you're you're all ready. And as you slap him and as you're singing, he's he just says, "Stop singing that!" Um, uh, and you can tell that that like you're really getting on his nerves. Uh, and the song is still playing; it's still echoing between between all the buildings. Um, and Grillo, you can see as you take a step back, you can still see the battle that is happening down the road, and you can see that you're you're winning your 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 troops your side is is pulling out uh, a win you can see that there are orcs that are falling and your your people uh the grim hammers are there fighting in fact you can even make out far from far away you can hear the clang of <laughs> cruddy's of uh, cruddy's um uh frying pan as she wangs another orc over top of the head with it which by the way makes me very hungry <laughs> like I start like, oh, I want some Lee pies right now. The, the pain I thought of the you were going to say something else. But, okay. <laughs> um, hunger runs deep. <laughs> Thrain, it is your turn. You are unconscious. Um, I'm not going to have you make, so normally in the rules here, what you would do is you'd make a death saving throw. Um, uh, but uh, I don't I don't think that's going to be necessary, so I'm just going to skip it. Um, Thrain, you are um, transported once again into a beautiful field. And as you're as you're standing in the in the field, um, there's not a forge next to you in this case. There is just a bench. And the bench has sitting on it next uh, next to you, and actually eating uh, what looks to be like a little bag of peanuts um, is Moradin, uh, and he's he's got he's got peanuts that he's eating sort of in a in a little bag there, um, and he says, "A quick break for you." I fall prone in front of him and I say, send me back, Lord Morden, send me back. Um, and he smiles and he puts a hand on your shoulder and he says, oh, you're not done yet, young one. You've still got lots in you. Um, as he does that, that is Shusha's turn. Shusha obviously doesn't know that, uh, that Thrain was taken away into a beautiful fantasy land to eat peanuts with his god um so he's gonna be very emotionally distraught by the fact that his friend is now unconscious and he's gonna run over there uh i, I imagine we're pretty close and he's gonna kneel down and put his hand on thrain's chest and cast healing word and the word of course is moradin um, um with his hand on 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 thrain's chest casting that uh spell at a higher level to give 2d4 uh, plus three uh healing so that is eight healing uh, to Thrain. And then I imagine Groom, uh, Groomsh, the avatar of Groomsh, is still standing there right next to us, right? Uh, you guys were able to sort of escape just a little bit. And Groomsh, Easy. because of his injured knee, is, is like standing back up uh, and, and like gripping his side. Um, and he doesn't heal himself. He like, you see his hand turns red hot and he sears the wound at his side. That's um, so rock and roll. Rambo. Uh, and but but he's now he's now standing. So so you guys kind of like retreated just a I little bit away as he as he sort of took a moment to hear. How close well. is he? Um, he's within ten feet. That's my question. <laughs> you read my yeah. mind. Um, yeah, uh, Shush is gonna put his hand on on Thrain's chest and say Moradin, and then like once again, camera sort of like uh, on Shush as he tilts his head up and then scrunches up his face and says Moradin, and then uh, casts Thunder Wave. Uh, awesome. Uh, he gets a saving throw against that. Save is 13 um, is the DC. I'll paint because the opportunity seems so apt, Adam, that if you want to use your cutting words, uh, this would be a really good one for it. Yet, yeah, isn't that a reaction against his attack against me? Oh, cutting I thought words? it was... Uh, oh, I no, sorry, I was thinking of Hellish Rebuke. Yes, uh, I would love to, to do that, actually. That's a great one. I'd use my last Cause, bardic, cause bardic he... inspiration... To give him a minus. He beat, he beat your save, but only barely. Minus three. That's enough. Um, 
so so he like what, what like are the cutting words? Cutting words? What's, to... what's the cutting word? Moradin. It's the same word for all of them. Healing, cutting, <laughs> Morden. It's, it's, it's all. It's all. <laughs> yeah. It's inflection, really. Morden really Uber Alice. The... It's my it's my uh, yeah. punk rock song. Um, uh, I love it. <laughs> um, so that uh, thunder wave is three D eight. Um, and that is uh, five, three, and three. So that is eleven thunder damage against him. Nice. Um, once again, so he he holds up his arms and he looks like he's gonna brace against it. Um, and the the like it comes right back around to the chorus in the song again. Uh, uh. And it goes, it goes, bang, 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 and he, bang. he just goes, stop singing that. Um, but it leaves him open as your as your blast uh, hits him square in the chest, and he goes flying backwards into uh, in, into another building. Uh, and this time doesn't seem to be getting up quite as quite as quickly as he as he did before. Uh, Thrain, awesome. you you see. Uh, the moment as as Morden stretches his hand out and sets it on your shoulder is the moment when you can see Shush. You wake up with Shush's hand on your on your chest. Nice. Uh, as you as you come back to again, um, and uh, that makes it Groomsh's turn. Uh, but he actually has to pull himself out of rubble because he is getting a lot weaker. Um. He does so. He he kind of shoves a big boulder off of himself and and uh, pulls himself up out of out of the the uh, rubble of the area that he's in. Um, and he holds up his spear and he's he's kind of steadying himself with the with the spear butt now. Um, and he says, "Morden, I won't let you take this from me again." Um, and then uh, he is going to. Um, kind of stumble forward, uh, still coming at you, still just full of rage and hate, uh, and and he's just gonna try to stab at at you with the spear. Um, okay, he's gonna stab at each of you. Eeks. Uh, Grolo, he hits you. Um, he's gonna do some damage, and it looks like looks like he's gonna hit Frame as well. Oh, Grolo, you're holding Thrain, right? I am, yes. Well, so he's going to do some damage to you, but Grolo, if you want to stand in the way of the attack for Thrain, you can choose to do so. Yes, heroic might. Stand. Um, Jubilant. Jubilant. So he... Jubilant martyr status. Jubilant, Jubilant martyr. martyr. Rapturous energy. <laughs> so he's going to do another... Um, uh, nine damage to you okay. first, which is then reduced by your um, by your uh, uh, frenzy. Frenzy. So by do your we round up or down. 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 Uh, so you round you so round four. down. Yeah. So you okay. take four, I guess. Okay. Down to um, nineteen. And then uh, he's going to do another um, twelve damage to 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 cut in half still. Yeah, but you get to cut that in half. Uh, no, to um, three. Uh, but you stand in the way. But I stand in the way. Yeah, and so, I cut so then half. you take six instead of... Okay, six. Instead okay. Of 13, I'm down to 13. Does he attack um, Shush also? Uh, he does. He misses you, Shush. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you... Do you uh, oh, you were hoping to Hellish Rebuke? Yeah. Do you have to get hit by the attack, or do you... Yeah, yeah you do. Okay, uh, so yeah, what do you do to miss it? What did you do? Um, uh, he He... Uh, lunges it at each of you. Um, Shush, what what happens for you? Uh, when he when he misses me, I move to yeah. the side and then I like in the true like uh, Gene Simmons, not Gene, yeah Gene Simmons. He like uh, sticks his tongue out and like licks the spear as it goes past the <laughs> shoulder, <laughs> throwing up the horns. Awesome. <laughs> hard hard rock. I love yeah. it. I was when thinking, he, when uh, he I said, said Gene Rich Simmons, I thought he, of Richard Simmons. I almost I said like, Richard <laughs> Simmons, and I was like, either way, it's. Rock and roll. All right. <laughs> You're still licking that That's pretty spear in either yeah. case. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he, he stabs uh, Grolo. He, he runs you through the shoulder um, oh. and then goes to stab at, at Thrain. And you, you just step right into the next yeah, blow. Yeah, I go like, uh, not so fast, Um And you, you take that one as well. Um, and that makes it Grolo's turn. Okay. And he is now looking in rough me. shape. Now he's made me very uh, okota, which means pushed off. Okay, so great. 
Uh, do I still have my heroic might, or is that uh, Oh, yeah. Off? You still got that okay. going. Okay, great. So, uh, I'm once again going to do my martyr attack. Um, so, it gives me my advantage. Uh, I'm going to... So, I guess... Let's see. I have Thrain on one side. Uh, I'm going to one-hand this attack, because I don't want to risk putting him down right now. Um, but I'm just like... I just like took this like two spears, and that just like... I'm like, just made me stronger in a way, mentally. And I grab my maul, and I, uh, I'm actually going to do this weird, like, forward attack right at his face. And I'm going to, oh, but wait, I got to roll and see if I, if I even hit. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So no more die four, by the way. Oh, no more die four, sorry. Because okay. he fell unconscious. Because he's unconscious. So this didn't work so well. So I got a seven, 12. Did I get anything else? No. Rel um, nope. I think that's Oh, but wait, this is the, gives you advantage on melee weapon attacks. So I roll Oh, yeah, again. because you're doing, you're still doing yes. a martyr attack. So you roll twice. Yes, martyr attack. Yes! Well, 13 plus 5. Yeah, 18. Yeah, that'll hit. Okay. Nice. And, and so, uh, let me roll the damage and see what's up. Do, do, do. Okay, 4 plus 6, uh, 10 plus 3. Plus 13, two, fifteen. Plus two, fifteen. Um, awesome. Okay, so then, so then, here's what happened. So yeah, so I'm like spear, awesome. spear. And I'm like, and I just because I said not so fast, and then I go with my maul just right at his face, and I go bang, and it, like just slam it flat into his like ugly face, like spam. Nice. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Right into it. Like, uh, yeah. he, he like, I want to leave, I wanna leave a little outline. <laughs> yeah, a little a little <laughs> indentation of your mall yes. shape in his face. You can attack I again, it. I That's think, great. right? Oh, yeah. And I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do my, uh, which one is it? The bonus. Uh, yeah, because I'm in frenzy. So I'm going to do my, my bonus attack. From the jubilation. Yeah, oh, from jubilation. Yeah, jubilation. <laughs> Roll again. You get advantage. Oh, Roll yeah, again. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, wanna, I don't want to tell you what I rolled. Okay, 14 plus 5, so 19. 19. Yep, the previous hit. one would have been a 6 total. <laughs> Minus 5 equals 1. Okay, so yeah, so uh, 19, and two, then I'm going to 2d6. 2, 4, 6 plus 3 is, uh, wait, what did I say? Yeah, so 9 plus, uh, so 12. Oh, no, no sorry, uh, 11. Eleven. Uh, okay. Awesome. Well, oh, man, he's he is in. And so I slammed shape. it into his face, and then mm -hmm. while he's like, like, like little birdies he's... and stars, and like his nose is yeah. starting to bleed, I I um I slam it again. I'm like, you know, I go bang, bang, <laughs> <laughs> like double whammy. <laughs> is it with? Is it with the music as well? Those are like yeah, two yeah, of the yeah, bangs. Yeah, yeah. That's the... a great idea. It's time with the music. <laughs> like bang, tum, 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 bang. <laughs> um, he he's like holding his face and and is like stumbling backwards. Uh, he even has to drop his spear to to like uh, catch his his balance. Um, Thrain, that makes it your turn. Okay. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna have you roll because I might fuck. It I up. think you can finish him off. I'm gonna give you the cinematic. Finish him off. Okay. I s leap up into the air, uh, the highest I've ever leapt. Um, from, which and is, actually, you're starting from my shoulder. Right, which is... So you're, like, jumping off my shoulder. Yeah, the highest I ever leapt before was, like, three inches, and this is, like, <laughs> you know, six inches. And I bring my hammer down on top of his head, and I say, By Moradin's song, sung through the streets, go back to where you had came. Boom! <laughs> Awesome. There is a huge flash of light. Um, and it's not just the light uh, coming from the impact point of your hammer. It's also a shadow uh, that, that seems to reflect it from exactly the other side. And the light and the shadow uh, burst outward from your, from your point of impact uh, in every direction. And the light is bright enough that, it, that there's a moment of where none of you can really see anything. And as the light fades away, your hammer having delivered its blow, um, you can see the visage and the, the shape of 
Groomsh has faded away and crumpled down on the ground before you um, is Blancmere, um, back in his sort of original body. Um, and he is dead. Uh, but he is, uh, he, he's dead, but he is also smiling. Uh, almost like he is mm. finally at peace. Uh, but he's sort of crumpled into the ground, and, and he's in like a crater of a spot uh, where where Groomsh used, once was when he crumpled to the ground with your <laughs> with your blow. Um, from there, after defeating Groomsh, the three of you notice that there is uh, just a, a, an odd moment of, of silence and a moment of sort of recovering for yourself. But because of the empowerment of Moradin in this place and with all the all the troops, it's really not hard to now overpower and take down the remaining orcs that are that are in the city. Um, and here's what we're going to do. The, the moment of the defeat is is this epic moment that you get to have. But what I'm actually going to have you guys do is describe for me the epilogue. Um, so much like we did on the way into the battle, where you were describing your epic moments coming coming through it, um, I'm going to give you some some GM power here, uh, some descriptive <laughs> power to um, how does this world, how does this town, uh, what happens after this? Um, and you can describe one piece of it. You don't have to describe you know the whole the whole overarching thing. Pick one thing to describe about what happens after the, the extent of this. Maybe one character to follow or one one uh, uh, piece of the of the plot to, to wrap up like uh, an, an, a long period of time or a short period of time um, we'll say we'll say like uh, the next couple of days okay well uh, Morden's priests crawl out from under the rubble uh, and com- convene in solemn uh, worship while they set to the long task of slowly rebuilding their temples and um, reaching out to the injured around them. And I guess, and if I'm alive, then I'm, I'm doing that with them, right? Yeah. You are still alive. Um, uh, and uh, the, the Moradin uh, priests seem to regard you with a, a pretty high level of praise and appreciation um you're not a they don't they don't pray to you because that would be wrong um but they definitely like treat you with a tremendous amount of respect um uh almost like like kind of a famous person now nice. uh within at least the temple of Moradin. Woo! uh shush i clearly the songs of Moradin are powerful and this is more than not just the god but more than the the rock and roll band so um i know that they're gonna have banners to moradin and with all due respect they're gonna be honoring the god moradin but i do hope that they hang their banners with that sort of red and white coloring of our (laughs) rock and roll uniforms so that we can all just recognize that moradin is more than just the god Morden is in all of us, and Morden rocks. That's awesome. <laughs> I like it. Yes, they do. In fact, hang the banners with the backing of the of the Morden the band colors to go along with it. Uh, Grolo. So, it, right immediately as like the crater forms and Grumsh is defeated, I like look left at Thrain. I look right at Shush, and I, I. Uh, enigmatically i just like quickly high five the two of them and i dart away running away and i don't explain anything and 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 i i sort of like after i've gone like a few paces i look back and i'm like i gotta go see about a girl (laughs) (laughs) and then i like i go to the battle and i'm just like punching you know i'm punching uh orcs left and right and they're just like falling and stuff and i'm making a beeline for i'm following the sound of metal clanging and then i finally i find her and i and i show up and i'm like i'm here to help you and she's like you know help yourself and then she keeps hitting everyone and i just like start fighting uh, uh, beside her and then when it's all settled when the dust is settled and 
there's bodies everywhere. We just like look at each other and we like both at the same time go like, Lee Pies? Sounds good, right? And like we head, <laughs> head into the sunset to make some Lee Pies. Um, and we both make Lee Pies and make Lee Pies. And we make Lee Pies for <laughs> everyone. Like we, we try to make as many Lee Pies as possible. Uh, maybe some Lee Pies that will come in nine months later too. But like the main thing is we make Lee Pies <laughs> for a lot of people. And um, a couple days later, you know, we're at the tavern where uh, like all of us are, are drinking our, 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 our um, meat or whatever. And uh, we're eating some leftover Lee Pies. Well, at least Grolo is. The other ones are kind of like eyeing it suspiciously because they've been out in the sun for like a full day or something. <laughs> and then I lean over to, uh, to Thrain and, and, and Shush and I'm like, I think I finally get it. I think I finally understand. Snakes. Snakes have a low center of gravity. <laughs> and that <laughs> is a true metaphor. My God, Grolo. <laughs> You're the wisest man alive. It was perfect. <laughs> um, and uh, that's where sort of the campaign is going to come to an end. Um, we're going to do two last things, which is uh, we're going to do a, a one year later for each of your characters uh, before our sort of final final checkout of, of the characters. And then we'll do a uh, our regular kind of um, uh, spotlights and, and, and checkout process. Uh, but all of the stuff in the in the town, in the in the city is vastly impacted. The entire kingdom uh, basically has to recover from from this devastating attack from these orcs um, but at the same time there's a lot of opportunity that people in the kingdom use in order to to pull themselves together and really come together as a as a people um, uh, you guys find out later on that the king had actually been killed in the attack as well um, and so there there is a lot of restructuring and a lot of reorganization that happens within the the city of Pahiha. Um, and a lot of a lot of people died or, or lost their homes or lost their their uh, opportunity for livelihood. So there's there's definitely a, a fair amount of mourning that, that comes along with it. Um, but uh, unequivocally, um, everybody in the city sees the three of you as being the heroes that helped to make it happen. And Nicholas as well, um, who gets invited by the new king uh, to be a member of his of his royal guard. Um, so, what I would like to know is, uh, we'll, we can come back around to it in the same order. Uh, what does the one year later look like? Um, and you can decide, or I guess, uh, Thrain, you can decide just for yourself. Uh, um, but there's a big question of whether or not the three of you stuck together for that year, or, or the three of you may have split up and gone your own, your own separate ways. Um, the choice is sort of up to you, but, but, um, uh, Kirk, what, what, where is Thrain a year later? Well, I'll throw it up to collaborate with the other three. I would definitely like the story to continue us together, but obviously everyone else could um, make that choice for them. So Thrain's up for uh, continued adventures with his best friends while he continues to do the solemn duties of priesthood that are many in a town that is trying to recover from not only the physical damage the structural damage of which doors are very good with stone and the organizational damage, the spiritual damage, the, the community damage and Moradin's priests are, uh, he wants to make them the backbone that will protect against these incursions in the future and incursions of all kind. Uh, he doesn't want to be head priest. He doesn't like that kind of administration, so he assists with the head priest that uh, is established by the rank and file. Um, but uh, he gets drunk a lot, <laughs> and he wishes for a day of uh, meeting um, another dwarf. Uh, some say they have beards, some say they don't, and... <laughs> and um, he doesn't know what he would do under such circumstances, but uh, he does He does miss that. He sees people doing that, but he feels he has too much duty to follow through with. Um, 
but he for the first time in his life he relaxes he figures evil is probably not coming anytime soon there's been enough of that and so that this year he you know really relaxes in the, in the town and nice uh but if the if his fellow buddies are up for it he is um, still hanging out with them and you know heeding the call if if a call for adventures is is needed awesome sweet how about shush i picture a full uh sister act two back in the habit uh (laughs) where (laughs) where shush (laughs) is by no means a godly man but he's uh certainly seen the power of morden and uh in wanting to stay connected with the only friends he's really ever had uh staying in in Piha and uh really wanting to support the church of Moradin by making the choir really good um <laughs> supporting the youth the disaffected youth in Piha who are maybe not sure where to go they can come in and rock out um it's really a school of rock meets uh sister act 2 back in the habit love it <laughs> <laughs> all right so it's a year later the scene opens, there's like this torch. It's very like a dark kind of gloomy room. There's a torch flickering. And you see like the, the outline of Grolo. And you see the outline of um, Cruddy. And uh, Grolo says, um, are you sure this is gonna be okay? Cruddy says, listen, we've been through a lot. We can get through this together. But you gotta promise me something. What's that? This'll be the last time, at least for a week. <sighs> Fine. Okay. So then, like, the door opens, and Grolo heads in to change a diaper. <laughs> and, and then she, and then Cruddy says, Fine. After you're done changing that diaper, you can go play with your stupid band, but you gotta be back later. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. And basically, Grolo's settled down a bit in Pahija. He, he, they've had a little one. He's uh, learning how to be a, a, a half father. But he, but he really doesn't want to... He wants to be there for the child because he doesn't want a repeat of what happened to him. And uh, his father actually is coming to the picture. He's, grandpa is around and helping and trying to make up for lost time. But... He does make time to play with the band every now and then. He does go visit his friends and they, they, they hang out at the tavern and they set up shows every now and then. So they're like weekend warriors, so to speak. And he still longs for the day where he hears that some, some foe has come to town and he's hoping. And you know, he doesn't tell Cruddy this because she's gonna freak out or something, but he's hoping. <laughs> what, is, what is Grolo's child's name? Oh, that's a good question. Can't, maybe we should do the little, the little round round the table. All right, start us off. Okay, K. R. A. Johns. B. Wait, Johns. Oh, wait. Yeah, sorry, uh, Johns. Um, I'm gonna say L. Crawl. Um, L. H. A. Krala. It's a girl. It's a girl. Krala. Krala. Awesome. I love it's a beautiful it. name. Krala. Little Krala. Little Krala. And but you gotta say it right. It's Krala. It's Krala. Well, she was conceived in Bahia. Bahia. Krala. And I think that's we're we're gonna end it on on that note. Um, Yay! That's a place what a journey! Oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> epic. Um, epic. So our for our, our final stuff, we'll we'll do our usual checkout, uh, which is a spotlight that you have for somebody else. Um, and I'll I'll add a. I guess we'll we'll just do that one. But if you want to add in a takeaway that you that you might have from from the whole of our campaign, uh, this might be a good place to do that as well. Mm. But who feels uh, like they're ready with a spotlight for something? I, I, I'll 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 go for this specific one. Um, I just really liked. So today, Adam was very. Uh, Adam uh, Shush. Adam was very 
cinematic. I mean, we were all cinematic, but I loved some of your cinematic moments. I loved that. And I especially liked how you yes ended my scene. Because like you did the thing where you jumped off and you did your cool thing. And then I told my side of the story. And then you came back with like what really had happened with Shush. <laughs> Um, I just thought that was a h hilarious and very descriptive moment. But like you, you kept doing these like nice little things where you like lick the spear and stuff like very <laughs> cinematic. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, oh, and then as far as like my takeaway from the whole thing, first of all, this is the first time I've ever done like a full D and D campaign in my life. Like I played stuff as a kid, but I never really had a gaming group in Colombia. It wasn't real. I mean, a couple people did, but it wasn't really a big thing. Um, and so this is my first time really going from beginning to end through a long D&D &D campaign. I absolutely loved it. Thank you for bearing with me because I'm, I'm still like noobing out on all the die and all this kind of things. But, but it was really, really fun. Um, and uh, man, I, I can totally understand the therapeutic value because we talked about so many aspects of like how the character wanted this and I wanted this. And and it helps you role play through, literally role play through so many different aspects of relationships and, and things. Amazing. Kudos to uh, Adam Johns as well for leading an amazing campaign. Yeah, for me, um, I mean, I could just repeat everything that we've said thus far in previous spotlights in terms of Adam Johns' ability as a DM, which is unparalleled. Uh, but I'll, I'll spotlight Davis as well. There was this little moment, I don't know if Adam Davis, you meant this, but... There's this little, you know, when you're on the docks and you're just like, well, oh, yes. I could go this way. I thought that that was a, a subtle uh, continuation of Shush's arc and maybe like the key moment of Shush's yeah. arc that was played in a way that was very character congruent in that Shush wouldn't announce like Grolo would about like, I am now at my... At my story arc, you know, it was like this very subtle moment, and yeah. and uh, I could tell there was some real emotion there for you, which which I thought was amazing. That, that, sorry, I want to bolster that because I I believed that both real Adam and Shush were fully ready to make that leap, and I was getting really sad. I'm like, oh my god, this could be really a thing. It was, yeah, I, I totally, like, sort of spaced on that. That's absolutely true. That was great. Yeah. Um, can I just say, I, I would have let you made that make that choice if that wound up, wound up being the case, and I have absolutely no idea how I would have rolled back if, into the campaign I mean, to make sure that you were still honestly, there. Honestly, the... I, I know we're sort of off the individual people at answering the checkout question, but the... That moment was Shush's arc. That was like his whole thing. I've said over the course of all the check-in questions thus far, Shush's whole journey is about like wanting to be meaningful. Um, he so in that moment he was like, I could be helpful to these people on this boat. Maybe that's my, maybe that's my journey, and uh, I super appreciated the way that that scene played out because he would have gotten on the boat if somebody didn't come tell him that he mattered. Um, so my spotlight for today was, would be on Thrain sort of picking up that scene and yeah. knowing like that was the moment, uh, um, Shush and the scene needed that sort of call to action and the, the recognition of, of the, the team, the band of brothers that, that the three of us are. Um, and, from my perspective as as Adam Davis in the midst of quarantine, um, staring into the cold abyss of my computer screen every day, working from home, um, it was really, really, you know, uh, personally meaningful to be like, yes, the work that we are doing together is powerful. We are, we are a team journeying together towards the greater goal. So that was both, there was the, the, the emotions that you saw on my face uh, on our on our video chat right now, we're legitimately like I needed to hear that, Kirk. Thank you. <laughs> but I gotta add that, that was a beautiful moment, and and I'm so glad Thrain stepped in because the problem is, Grola wasn't gonna do it. He wouldn't have had the words. I mean, he, in mm -hmm. fact, Grola wasn't quite getting it. <laughs> and frankly, me as Zumberto, I wanted to watch the world burn. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, so I was so happy that Thrain stepped in. That's a perfect also thing for Thrain to do is to have that sort of relational yeah. leadership and and that moment where he can he can uh, certainly have all of the relationship with the you know 
godly divine stuff that he reads in his books uh, but also like here you know this this team is the one where that all the all the learning and the the divine stuff that you've learned and all the connection you've had with Morden actually where the rubber hits the road a little bit yep yeah and for those listening it's a commitment to the character that really enhances you know if everyone commits to the game because I've played a, the thing. So the, my major takeaway from the whole campaign is the whole campaign, uh, because I've played I've played D and D for forty years, or thirty nine years to be specific. I played with a lot of different people. I've played a lot of different campaigns, and there's a lot of memorable moments in my life. And uh, but there are very few moments that really stick with me. And the things that uh, make it memorable are when one or more people are committing. I've, I don't think I've ever been in a D&D group where everyone is 100% committing to the collaboration. And there, there's no hesitation. There's no insecurity. There's no uh, distraction. You know, there, there's politeness and dedication and you know, when everyone is doing their thing, everyone's really paying attention, yes anding. There's there's never a moment where it's like I don't really like this story or or um, you know there's a line between joking too often that some people will do where it takes you out of the game you know so a little bit of joking is okay but you don't want to joke all the time because there there's moments where you want it to feel real in a sense and and so what I take away is th- I will always remember moments in this campaign because. It feels real to me. It's like living in a movie and having an effect on what happens and the characters and the relationships and the people. Like I have a vision in my head and those will never go away. The The feeling of elation when things work out and the, the worry when things aren't going well and the the, the feeling of meeting a god, like I, my character, like I know what yeah. that now feels like, even though, of course, I've, I would never have felt that before. The, the feeling of watching my doofus friend uh, have a crush <laughs> on a Lipai <laughs> cook. Uh, my, my, my feeling of seeing Nicholas um, so competent and, and, and confident, you know, and, right. um, and that, that story arc. And, and to see the look on his face when he is sent into the marshes, surely going to die, but... He, for the first time, has purpose in his life. I mean, these are massive moments that even just watching a movie doesn't really feel as, as uh, doesn't have the weight that when you fully commit to a, a collaborative story building exercise would have. So that's what I take away. Yeah. Well said. Here, here. Yeah. I also um, just want to note that we're all like level three. Yeah. And, and um, I, I also really appreciate that about this too. Is that like the the story, um, and what we what we did actually is still as just as epic. Like I had three spells I could cast. You know, it wasn't like I was looking at a library of choices. It was like really, a, and that sort of enabled us to let the story. And because it wasn't like I had fifteen spells to cast, it was how do I make my rapier attack and my my thunder wave spells. How do I make those feel fun and different? And that, like the the way that we all sort of did that with mall attacks or the you know few spells that we have, and it was just a nice feeling of of even sort of the the every person can can make change was an, another nice feeling. We 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 weren't, we weren't chosen. We were chosen one sort of, but it wasn't like we were, you know. It wasn't like we're what was that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where they're all the Expendables, the Seth Expendables, yeah. where they're like all the superheroes from all the other movies coming together. We're not the Avengers coming in, you know. This is like a bunch of people just by sheer force of will coming in and, and doing the right yeah. thing. And I like that. I like that story too, the sort of underdog story there. Yeah, I, just to continue highlighting this, um, I was wondering how Johns was going to engineer the story so that we could actually fight Groomsh because. I was thinking, I was thinking, well, and I didn't think about that much, but especially as we were doing it, I, I was marveling at John's ability to, uh, because we are third level, and but I don't know I'm third level, you know, uh, yeah. Thrain doesn't know he's third level. <laughs> Thrain's like, 
the God has blessed me, so I'm going to yeah. do this. You know, I have I have the power of my God. It doesn't matter. I can take a God. You know, but you know, game wise, I'm like, well, how is this going to work? Either he's got either we have to. I thought John's was going to make us so that we stopped him just as he was about to come into the world while before he had power. But then once he had power. I was like, yeah, I was pretty demoralized as obviously a character, but then as a player, I was just like, well, what in the, how is this going to work? And then to work in the concert, and when when you when John's first sort of pushed in that direction, I was like, well, so what? We're going to sing a song, and and then what? Like, who cares? Like, what what's that going to do? But then, you know, more people got involved, and then that brought the power of of Morden himself, and empowered us and pushed back the influence of the grumpsh power which made total sense and brought ev- all the themes back together you couldn't write a script that was better than that for the love of god star wars people jj <laughs> abrams listen to john's man there's a way to write a script that makes sense that actually is satisfying um, and i was i was um I was hoping, you know, I, I, I felt like I caught on early because I, I was like, all right, I think he's going to do it. So that's why when, when I was stuck in the stone, I looked at Grimsh and I'm like, you forgot one thing. And then I sang a song. Obviously, Rolo didn't know what was coming, but that was the only thing he could do at that point. And, and then, but I was like, oh, I really hope this happens because then that'll have more meaning. That I was like, oh man, that was so good. <laughs> You, you guys, have, you guys have been leading up to a final concert for like three or four sessions yeah. now, yeah. and I was like, I, I can't, I gotta, I gotta throw a final concert in there. Well, but, it's gotta, but it made, it's, it made, gotta have it. It made narrative sense, right? Because it, it's like an episode of the A Team or whatever. Like you can't overpower these people naturally. It's not only mm-hmm. are we level three, like there's a ton of these people, like, and. Um, and so we needed something that was that was going to inspire, and so it was perfect. The because I also really love that moment, uh, Kirk, when you when Thrain looks at Grolo and is like, "You believe in Moradin, feel Moradin," and finally, for the first time, Grolo really believes. You know, he's like, "Yeah, yeah, I believe it." You know, and I, I thought that was great. <laughs> yeah, I re- I really really like that. I I also really liked the just the motif of. It, it had this sort of revolutionary vibe to it. It reminded me of Les Mis and that song, uh, the songs oh, of yeah. angry men. Do yes. you hear the people sing? And it was like the, the villagers are sort of rising up against <laughs> this oppressive uh, presence, this groom, you know, and I just, that just felt really cathartic. <laughs> I, I had chills at least three times during this, by the way. Yeah. Like when, when you told me the generals were joining in, I was like, Oh my gosh, I got goosebumps. <laughs> And then uh, a little later, when like Thrain got got smashed, I was like, "Oh, got goosebumps." Um, and then when I think when you were describing your cinematic moment, I got goosebumps. Like it was just there was there was a lot of good stuff. <laughs> I love it. Um, I I think my my big takeaway, and, and maybe the thing I want to kind of leave audiences with, is um, just how much to kind of echo a little what what Kirk said how much of a difference it makes to have a group of players that are really committed and, and, and really uh, in into the game. Um, and the really amazing thing about Dungeons and Dragons is that it, it, it is, it is a collaborative storytelling experience. It, it, I, I can plan out pieces of it and I can plan out, you know, here's where I, I think the plot is probably going to go and the decisions I think the players are probably going to make and I can plan for a lot of those things. But at the end of the day, I, I both want to leave it open and I want to leave it an opportunity for for the story to, to move along outside of my control. And I, I want to respond to all the, all the great, you know, uh, moments and, and acting and great things that the, that you, the players, um, bring to the, bring to the table and bring into your, to your characters. Um, and so, you know, Shush, Shush could have decided <laughs> to go on that ship and I would have made that work, but, the really exciting part about it is that I would have to make that work is that I would right. have to find a way to, to uh, respond to that. 
um, or to, to do something with that. Or or the moments where, you know, I say, you guys are playing a song now. What, is that? what does that look like? There's a lot of different ways that you can choose to do that description or choose to, to be in that moment. And it makes such a big difference to have a group of players that are ready to, to go, all right, I guess we're... I guess we're doing a song now. <laughs> let's let's describe what this song is like. Uh, let's come up with some some quick lyrics for a, for a song that we're apparently playing here. Um, and it just came out so spectacularly. So I really I really appreciate all of you all of you as players um, and uh, as people that I really enjoyed this this journey with. Um, awesome to, to be a part of that. All right. Well, Yay. any final words, y'all? Virtual virtual um, mugs clashing together. Clink. <laughs> the final thing that I want to leave everybody else with is this may this is maybe not the end, right, Kirk, of our of our Dungeons and Dragons experiences uh together. Yeah. Uh, there may be some some further follow up uh on this. Um so yeah. stay tuned and, and keep watch. Stay tuned, keep watch, send your your fan art, uh which we're 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 always desperate to receive and we always really enjoy but yeah so stay tuned because dungeons and dragons will not die yes <laughs> everyone out is, there oh go if ahead there is fan art please uh please let us know i would love for you to put it on social media and tag game to grow yeah oh nice and everyone out there please take care of yourself grolo if if we were to sing a song that would play while the credits were rolling on the cinematic uh, in the bar. The the three of us and maybe Nicholas is is joining into Cruddy. She's holding the baby. Uh, there's there's Daniel's brother and other people are are joining in. What would that song sound like, Grillo? <laughs> We started out so simple, there was the three of us, then a fourth, and we fought so bravely. But one day, this grunge idiot showed up, and we had to band together, because we have a low center of gravity. Yes, we have a low center of gravity. And Grumsh will fall again, and Moradin will play to the end. Bang. <laughs>